while an option for remote attendance and or participation is being provided as a courtesy to the public, the meeting and hearing will not be suspended or terminated if technological problems interrupt the virtual broadcast unless otherwise required by law. Members of the public with particular interest in any specific item on this agenda should make plans for in-person versus virtual attendance accordingly. The meeting will be held in person in the main meeting room of the Deerfield Municipal Offices today, October 4th, 2023. In accordance with Mass General Laws, Chapter 30A, Anyone uh, intending to record this meeting must identify themselves to the clerk and provide their name and address for the record. Welcome, everybody. Um, first call to order is... Um, we need to open their meeting, too. Yes. Oh, yes. Let me let the school committee open their meeting. Can you hear us, Carrie? Uh, yep, I just unmuted myself. Uh, so I see uh, Mary and Erica here, and if you called in, um, I, I don't see you, but you're here. Uh, so we have a quorum, so I'm going to call the Deerfield School Committee meeting to order at 532. Thank you. Thank you. Um, and Darius, uh, thank you for coming. We're um, having a joint meeting with the Deerfield Elementary School Committee to discuss and appoint a person to fill a vacancy on the Deerfield Elementary School Committee. And um, Trevor has, uh, McDaniel has kindly volunteered. To do I'm ha happy to serve for, for a short time if, you know, until we can find somebody that can run and uh, at the, you know, spring election and, and be seated. If, if you want me to, I'm happy to do that. I haven't had any luck finding anyone else to, but a few almost, but nobody kind of like, yes, I want to do it. So yeah, that's the same. To Thank you, Trevor. Oh, you're I welcome. Yep. So, and is there any other comment? Okay, well, Trevor, um, I guess you've been nominated by the select board. Um, make a motion. Yes, yeah. I'll make that motion. And I'll second it. Um, so then we'll vote. All those in favor? Tim Hilchey, aye. Trevor McDaniel, abstain. Carolyn Ness, aye. Well, the, do, do the they school, need to vote? Yes, school. the school committee must do the same thing. Okay, uh, roll call vote. Um, I'll go in order. Mary? We need, oh, a no, we need, we need to make a motion. Yep, just make a motion. Oh, sorry. I'm going to get out of myself. I, I look for a motion to accept Trevor McDaniel's. I move to accept Trevor McDaniel as our newest school committee member. I second that. Okay, Erica, thank you. All right. Thank you, Mary and Erica. Thank you. Thank you. Um, okay, uh, if there's no further discussion, we'll move to a vote. Um, Mary? Mary Raymond, yes. Yeah. Erica? Erica Jacob, yes. And Carrie Etchells, yes. Thank you. All. Again, thank you, Trevor. Very, thank you, Trevor. Thank you, Trevor. Again. You're welcome. Thank you. Um, while, you, while you all are here, um, I just wanted to make sure you, if you had any questions on the uh, entryway. We had our Municipal Vulnerability Preparedness Committee meeting um, earlier today, and um, my understanding is that Darius has been very graciously um, um, offered to oversee the project as far as being the point person, and um, it is getting started. If I, I didn't know if you had any questions. Did you do you want us to um, approve the engineering contract, or did you, I know there was talk about using you know which engineer we want to use for the project um i don't know if we're if you're happy continuing on we can we can approve that or what are the thoughts you had i know we had trouble on um, last time but there were personnel changes so i don't know what your thoughts are Darius, you feel comfortable with yeah eating? so I, I guess that was my question so um i i've managed so just making sure we have this clear how we're we're going to do this and i have the same conversation with every select board on projects like this where the money's coming to the town yet the school's kind of on the front the front page of uh the yep. project so um you folks will sign off on um on any contracts correct yes yes okay and so i guess the first order of business would be to i have to sign on with for a engineer and i was waiting to clear this up before approaching emi to see if they want to continue um in such so yeah um, so, so basically i'll negotiate with them and then have you guys sign off is that how we want to do it 
Um, it, it, I just had a couple of questions. You've worked with EBI preliminarily at this point, Darius. Um, um, sorry, did I call it? I gave the wrong uh, initials there. Um, yes. Um, no. <laughs> you guys did. Yes. Yeah. The no, town. But... The town did. The they did the the tree project in the um, in the rain gardens to the right of the school um, right. in the drop off loop. Right. And so that was all done through um, the MVP project yes. through the town. Yeah. And so I didn't have any dealings with them. Like I don't have their number in my role decks. I have it on email somewhere, but um, so I've never really dealt with them straight up. Okay. Yeah. So my understanding, just so. Uh, everyone has a level of comfort um there's a certain engineering budget in the in the grant and whoever we work with it it will not exceed that amount that is and, correct um so i was more interested in uh we have these site development plans that look like they were developed by ebi some time ago but yep. my understanding is that, that the design for the entryway has changed substantially since then and you have a current plan for your hardscaping, is that right, Darius, DES? So where we left it with them is I had an initial meeting with them and uh, with Chris Curtis, uh, kind of an introductory meeting. Yep. Um, the, last, um, the last plan that were kind of formally discussed had issues with snow clearing, where the, the I'll call it the town, but the right. uh, uh, DPW wanted to be able to they can get, still get a truck in. Um, to do the big the big clearing and then you know it's fixed up by shovels um, or snowblowers um, and they did come back with an alternative to that the issue so the grant is the grant is for a, I don't have the number in front of me but it has um, it's for just over a hundred thousand dollars the school had to match thirty thousand dollars of that um, and then on top of that we have the hard the hardscape project, which is the, the asphalt, which the town um, passed by Warren of $85,000. Right. So it's now we got to take these two projects and put them together. Um, there was some concern about that when I was talking with Chris Curtis. I talked with Shelly Bereda, who has no real concerns about that. She says we really do that all the time, mixing grants and local funding to get jobs done. And so, um, you know, I now have to work with the engineer to kind of put the two projects together. Um, we went out and got some um, some asphalt numbers. I don't think concrete's going to be in the picture. It's just going to cost way too much. So it's going to become some kind of stamped asphalt. I'm kind of leading down that way. It hasn't been officially decided that, but I'm telling you that's what the, unless yeah. we got another fifty or $60,000 we can throw at it. Um, yeah. I doubt that's going to be um, obtainable. Um, so, yeah, so that's kind of the next step. So the next step is say sit down with the engineering group and look at their current plans. Um, and kind of iron that out and with the different numbers we got and then um they would put together a bid package for us and then we'd have to probably put the whole thing out of the bid as one project so somebody right. that can do the the drainage the rain guards and the uh the asphalt um mm -hmm. or be the um the gc to do it all you know to cover it all so mm -hmm. that's kind of that's the next step Go ahead. So it, it seems to make sense that, uh, you know, that the school should actually drive the project in terms of um, the, the MVP part of it is sort of like this separate but um, paid for by a grant proce process. And whatever you do on your hardscaping, if the shape changes or whatever, um, because the money that's allowed for it is finite, then then that's going to dictate how the 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 rain gardens or, or the, the MVP portion of it's going to be designed. So, yeah. Um, I, I agree with that completely. And I feel like, um, I mean, I, I'm not wedded to EBI. I feel like we have a really good relation with, um, with Jeff Squire and his team. And I know you've worked with them on, on the park and um, the tennis courts and you have a good working relationship with them. I don't, you know, I almost would leave it up to who you feel like would put these two projects together and manage the project best. I, but we we would support you in either of those decisions, you know. But we could sign the contract for either. I just want to make sure that we're not going to have the issues we had on the first round uh, with the no, three boxes I mean, the and all the other stuff. I mean, it was it was it's been a nightmare. So 
Well, and I know that there were other issues that wouldn't probably arise in this one. Yeah. So truthfully, the person died. So no, I know that, but just how it got picked up after and just yeah, this, it was one thing after the next on that whole job. Uh, I know. It, as it, long as you feel like you have a relationship with EBI uh, Darius, because you would be the one that would be dealing with them. Right. And so like, well, I don't have a relationship now, but I, you know, can make one. Um, I think the, I, I think what's important is like, what is the cost of engineering if they've already had plans? Right. So, um, it, you know, is that, you know, if they're coming back at this for another. I don't you know, have the breakdown right now, but it is, it's about a hundred thousand, isn't it? No, I meant for the design, the actual engineering itself. Right. Yeah. I, my understanding, it, the MVP grant pays for the engineering for the MVP component. Yep. The hardscaping is paid for by um, the project yep. and engineering the project. So um, if you're in it's order to find out what EBI would charge to design the hardscaping, that that would have to be asked of them. Right. Uh, right. But perhaps uh, this is not a huge project. Um, so it's possible that. EBI could do both components for the price that's in the MVP grant money, but that's a question that I haven't been involved in the project and I don't know what their response to that would be. But, uh, um, you know, that's why I asked, is there an idea of what the shape of this asphalt uh, in the front of the building is going to look like? Has that already been decided? Yeah. I mean, it's, it, uh, it's in the, it's in the, uh, the engineering, the, the specs put out by EBI, um, you know, basically they have the design of the front walkway and, you know, tree placement in that. We have like one tree we're going to have, there's not a tree that exists, but a tree they had put in, not go in and just be straight asphalt out. Mm -hmm. um, so it was, the discussion I had with them was the concern about, I want to do some stamped, con some stamped asphalt rather, but every time I say concrete, I don't mean it. We're not yeah. married to asphalt or concrete, um, but asphalt is going to be cheaper. Um and we probably want to do some stamp. Yeah, there it is. Okay. So it's the basic design that there is just the material. Right. Right. Chris, um, Nolan, can you just look up under our MVP grant how much um EBI's engineering is? It's it's part of our grant. Sure, I can find that. Um it's it would be it's part of the hundred thousand, I think, or whatever it is for the project, but the engineering has specific um, cap. They have to work within that cap various. I just, I don't, I don't remember what it is as a, a portion of what, um, cause it was part, it was paying for green infrastructure at the Leary lot and um, 2.0 MVP re revamp. So, um, just let Chris open it, look at it, but they are capped at that. So it's not going to cost us any more. They know that um, that's what they are working within is a budget. And it also, it looks like EBI designed this. So yes, they did. they've already done the engineering for it. It's the question of what material would be used. So would it make sense to have a conversation with them and say, look, you've already designed this. We want to change the material makeup. Um, is there any other engineering work that's not already been paid for? Right. Agreed. Right. Yeah. That, I mean, that is the next conversation is it was the question of who was doing the, the reason why it hasn't happened yet. I was waiting to have this conversation of who's going to oversee right. the project. Yeah. Yeah. Yep. Because you guys have, you guys have the checkbook. Right. But I have confidence in you. Dennis. Yeah, for sure. That, that's fine. I'm just trying but to. We'll, <laughs> but we'll <laughs> take the responsibility if you need. <laughs> yeah. I mean, we can be there. Um, like the roof, the like the roof, we can meet and have as opposed to select board meeting and make decisions there at at that time. We only need two of us and we can vote whatever, okay. um, just like the roof to make it sure it moves along. Yep. Okay, good. That's kind of what we needed to know. So I will get the ball rolling with EBI and um you know, I, I obviously our, our kind of our timeline is to get this thing out to bid yep. in early spring and get it done during July or August. Yes. And like I said, I, I don't think any of us have any problem if, you know, we can always get two people together.
for project yeah, meetings yeah. or whatever. Yeah, so, I mean, it, it really is, as, as Tim it, said, it's not a complex project. It's no, you know, it shouldn't be. No. There's not like they're going to open something up and have change orders, hopefully. Hopefully. <laughs> Fingers don't even, crossed. Don't even say that. <laughs> right. <laughs> okay. Well, thank you. Right, thank you. Do you want to adjourn your meeting? Yes, we would. Is there a motion to adjourn? Motion to adjourn. Thank you, Mary. Oh, I didn't think it needed to be seconded, but sorry, I will if you need it. <laughs> All, <right. laughs> All in favor? Um, yes. Mary? Oh. Erica? Erica? Aye. Aye. Terry Etchells, yes. All right. Thank you very much. Have a good evening. Thanks, Thanks, everyone. Yes. Thank you. Oh, Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Appreciate that. <laughs> Bye. Right. Bye. Take care. Bye. Thank you. Okay. Um, I did locate that number, and I know just in time for the school people to leave. Um, <laughs> That's fine. Thank you. The uh, task of the uh, green entryway at Deerfield Elementary School for that individual task, the budget is one hundred fourteen thousand five hundred thirty-nine. Okay. And does it have, does it have engineering broken out at all, or no? Probably not. Um, Let's see. Installation of rain gardens and stormwater landscape improvements is one category. There's another for student engagement, another for construction, bidding services, and then construction administration. Huh. huh. And do they have prices associated with them or not? Yes. yes. Okay. Yeah, each one has a price next to it. I think okay. I have that too. I could share with you. I think I got it last night for the MVP grant thing. Oh, so okay. I, I'll share that with you. I know I have it in my budget book. Well, I knew it was around a hundred thousand. Yeah. So thank it's, you. It's one hundred fourteen. Okay, thank you, thank you, Chris. All right, um, we are going to go into executive session. Um, we have our. Yeah, do you need the language? Yeah, we need the language. Is that? No, I don't. I don't... Know. Huh? We have the. I don't have the language. Exactly. I think it should be um, on the agenda under items unanticipated. Oh, oh, down oh, below. oh, oh, there okay. it is. Yep. Oh, yes. There it is. Great. Okay. Pursuant to general uh, laws, chapter 30A, section 21A6, the select board may enter into executive session to consider purchase, exchange, lease, or value of land if the chair so declares that an open meeting may be, have detrimental effect on the negotiation negotiating position of the town. And I so declare. I'll second that motion. Um, actually, you have to make the motion. Oh, I'll make the motion. And I'll second it. <laughs> okay. It's, if there's no other discussion, all those in favor of going into the executive session. Tim Hilchey, I. To, to invite uh, Casey oh, Warren. We need to invite Casey Warren. Um, and Chris uh, Dolan. Chris Lizzie Dolan, Dolan. Lisa Lee, Mead. Lee and Dwight. Lee Dwight. As right. chair of the housing committee. Okay. I'll second that motion. Yep. Um, Tim Hilchey, aye. <laughs> Trevor McDaniel, aye. Carolyn Ness, aye. Great. Okay. All right. We and will we... be back shortly. Yep. Um, we're, we are now um, back in session. Uh, so, welcome. Hi. I, ha I have to ask you to introduce yourself. I know, um, it, and all of you. Hi, I'm Julie Caswell. I'm chair of the Open Space and Recreation Committee. And we have with us um, Susan Happ, who is Hi, Susan. a member of the committee, Andrea Liebson, who's a member of the committee. Um, we may have Alan Swedland on, on um, Zoom, iPad. I'm not sure. <laughs> um, but we also have Deborah Yaffe and Greg Henricks. They're volunteers on the committee. Wonderful. Oh, Welcome. thank you. Welcome. Uh, um, and Chris, I think has the uh, has our PowerPoint um, ready for ready to go. If you if you folks yeah if want to come sit here and you can see the PowerPoint yeah. or whatever is seats. There's plenty of seats. Yes, absolutely. Yeah, and great. there's a couple over here. Yeah, or, a couple soft ones I'll, over here if you want. Or now that the sun's not too bad, we can yeah. turn that so that can... Um. Yeah, I could move I just want to say thank you. Um, I have done the open space plans previously, the original ones, 
So uh -huh. um, I am so appreciative you've done so much work. It's wonderful. It's great to have it updated so that we are eligible for other programs and grants. And it's good to see the Open Space Committee so vibrant and active. I mean, yeah. I, I know there was a period of time when it wasn't quite so active. So thank you so much for doing that. Yep. But I just wanted you to know that this is lovely because um, I do know how much work it was. So appreciate it. Thank you. Can everybody see my screen? Yes. Yes. Perfect. So just tell me when you want me to change the slide. Oh, so we're we're ready for the next one. That's a lovely picture of the rock. Mm -hmm. <laughs> That's the view from Pecumtuck Rock, of course. Um, so the open space and recreation plan was written in 2021 to 2022. Uh, it was approved by the state this spring and uh, that allows us to be eligible for this whole set of grants that come out of um, the Division of Conservation Services. So uh, the open space plan was um, out of date for a little bit there, but we're now back in action and are eligible for uh, grants. Um, so uh, next slide, please. The action plan uh, in in the plan uh, has a set of priorities and a co couple of the most uh, strong priorities are around increasing land under permanent protection in the town. And the town has about 22,000 acres, 21.7% are permanently protected, 327 are temporary protection, which is various 61, uh, chapter 61. A and B. A and B, yeah. and yes, th those programs. And 45.6% is unprotected or developed. So um, we're really looking at for the town, 21%, about a fifth of the land being permanently protected uh, at this point in time. So increasing the amount of land under permanent protection is a uh, big priority. Um, another big priority is making Deerfield more walkable and hikeable through development of and publicizing of trails and town walking loops. And when we did a survey of uh, residents, this was a number one recreational concern was places to walk, places to hike, and places to be active. And we, Deerfield has no official town trails or defined walking loops. So we are starting from zero um, with, with town trails. So please go ahead. Next slide. Um, as we were working on the plan, we identified five parcels of immediate preservation and recreational interest. And all five of these parcels are owned by the town of Deerfield. And when we were doing the plan, it appeared that they did not have permanent protection and they're not in very much uh, recreational use. Um, some people, they are used, but not, uh, not anything like say North Sugarloaf or South Sugarloaf that has defined trails and trail systems. So subsequent to the plan being done, we did detail, detailed research on these five parcels that are owned by the town. And the town was either given these parcels or they were bought by the town between 1926 and 1976. So long, uh, quite a long period ago. They do not have either permanent or temporary protection at this point in time. So these five parcels that we're talking about, all of them, are, or four of them have established trails. So they're trails that people use at this point in time. But if you go up to any of those parcels, um, you will not find any signage that indicates that the land is owned by the town or that it has public access. So it is essentially an invisible resource for recreation to most people um, in town. Um, these are uh, areas that are, ident are, de are identified as land of high environmental interest in the Biomap 2 
resilient land and critical lin lin linkages database. And we were just uh, looking at the zoning map over there and um, a couple of them are in the water protection zones as well. So these parcels have great potential uh, preservation and recreation use. So it's an opportunity to do both at the same time. So next slide, please. This is to show the uh, five parcels that we're talking about. Uh, four of them are on the Pecumtuck Ridge, um, Pine Nook, the Pine, uh, Pecumtuck Rock on Old Pine Nook Road, uh, the Pine Nook Memorial Forest, which is right off of, um, it's right on Pine Nook, and Steam Mill Forest, which is on Steam Mill. Um, all three of those are, as you can see, uh, very close to each other uh, on the Pecumtuck Ridge. The fourth uh, parcel is the Birchwood Nature Reserve, which is off of Stage Road and is owned by the town. And uh, the fifth parcel is off of Mill Village Road, and it's over on the side there, sort of uh, a, a, next to where the three is, to the left of where the three is. Um, so these I think are that one. That one had the berm that yeah. washed out during Irene, right? right. Yeah, it was okay. the old road, and there's no road there anymore. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Okay. Yeah. Uh, and acreages. Um, Anywhere from Pecumtuck Rock has 63 acres, um, the Pine Nook Forest is 18, uh, Steam Mill is 31, Birchwood is 36, and that little area on um, Mill Village Road is about five acres. So these are the, the parcels that we're most interested in. And if we can go to the next slide. Our initial project to implement the plan. So this is what we are thinking about uh, for the committee to be working on. And it is to work on preservation and walkable, hikeable deer field at the same time, beginning with these five town owned parcels that have great preservation and recreational potential. And our idea is to seek permanent protection for these five parcels and to do that through gaining conservation restrictions uh, for, the, for, the, for the five parcels. And after we uh, kind of get through that process of protecting these parcels, we'd like to focus on the four Pecumtuck Ridge parcels for an initial, an initial trail development project. So this would be a second round. Can I ask a question on that? So mm -hmm. when you come up Pine Nook Road, you get to the very tip top, right? And then I think these parcels are further south, right? Where the rock is and not right at that corner. I think, I thought we owned uh, a little bit of land right there at the top of the hill too, do we not? Yes, yeah. the, the fire district owns um, a significant piece of land at right at the top yeah. of that and then up along Rice's Ferry as well. Because I was don't oh, worry. My. I just so how embarrassing. We no it's fine. It's fine. <laughs> we all we all do it. Um the what I was there has been a lot of complaint about cars parking all over the road up there. And yes. it's not safe for people to go by. It's not safe to walk. So we had really wanted to do some sort of gravel, low impact parking space off of the road so people would have access to the trails. I don't know the best spot for that. Or if you guys have been thinking about so, it, go, go, <laughs> Andrea. The committee create, created, you know, updated the plan. Yeah. And we attended webinars on how to apply for uh, funds to create trails. There's mass trails does have those. And then we figured, then we discovered that they only give money if land has been permanently protected. Great. So first we have to permanently protect this land. Okay. We have a plan and we have um, an idea about a whole trail system. Absolutely. Yeah. But we can't apply for any money for right. it because the land hasn't been permanently protected. And, so we need to do that first. Yeah. And we have 
we have identified areas where we would like to have this trail. Yeah. We've identified ish some parking areas. Great. Great. We have spoken with folks from Eagle Brook slash right. the Alan Chase Foundation. Yeah. So we we You've are been doing completely this work. we completely understand that's, great. It. Uh, that's a next step and because my, we can't do yeah. <laughs> anything until the land has been and my worry was that we go and protect it and now we can't put a parking lot in for the cars. But if as long as we can and we have that ability, I'm so we totally we know good. there are there will be significant negotiations with the Alan Chase Foundation. For sure. Yep. Yep. Because and they're very works. concerned about traffic. Well, exactly. Yeah. And you don't want a ton of people, but you also don't want them all over the side of the roads now. And Right. And we also you know. understand that people are using the trails yes. formally right. with no control. Correct. No one, uh, you know, looking over them. Absolutely. There's all kinds of mountain biking activities yep. that are going on with a lot of organizations. Yep. We need some there, control. We need some. Yep. Some as long control. as you're on that, I'm. Okay. We are absolutely. I'm, I, I'm yep. seeing um, MA has their hand up. Go ahead, MA. I didn't want to interrupt your presentation. Uh, I was wondering about that. <laughs> I just, I don't know whether this is the right time or not, but um, I am, I just wanted to let you know that um, we've talked to Lily and uh, we being the energy committee has talked to Lily and Carolyn about the possibility of using some of that land to generate income uh, via uh, whatever it's called. What's it called, Carolyn? Carbon, carbon offset. sequestration. Yep. Offset. Yeah, yeah, the sequestration stuff. So, yep. uh, and we we are behind, you know, with, with the agreement of the select board, um, we're willing to pursue that. I don't know whether it's useful related to the timing of the protection or 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 not whether it's useful to you just to to to, to announce that we're good, we are pursuing that okay. yeah I, I i thank you i think that that um that would be part and parcel of this protection movement because mm. part of putting permanent protection on the land would be to figure out within a conservation restriction or potentially some other mechanism how we can protect the land and um, look at other uh, aspects like carbon sequestration or income or or whatever. We're, we're supposed to get more information. MA has already mm -hmm. um, volunteered to go to um, a November 9th meeting for me if... Um, I have jury duty that day if it's not canceled so yeah. that we get some more information on how all this works. Mm -hmm. um, because what we, our intention was to get a little bit of income to offset recreational, whatever, you okay. know, the development of a trail park, um, you know, maintenance, whatever the, it, it, I, there are other communities in the state that are using that small income to offset you know, uh, you know, budget issues for recreation. Mm -hmm. And it, it is usually trail systems or some kind of thing. So when we do, when you go to develop this trail, hopefully we'll have some plan in place that would, would give us some income to do trail maintenance. And is, is there, um, when you protect the land and the forest, is there a way to still manage the forest to make sure you have yes. and healthy trees and not just yeah. not not to confuse the thing but the right. farm bill is up for um uh renewal this year and it's supposed to be done by december and it will include um the opportunity for municipalities to apply for um forest management plan and then forest management um operations so um but, that's also exciting but, so the uh, the use of the term conservation restriction yeah. is misleading yeah. in some ways because restriction sounds like you're not allowing anyone to do anything. Got it. That's not necessarily the okay. case. Great. It just means you're not building buildings and stuff and developing. That's the, that's the term that the state uses. So yeah. That's the term. Sounds great. It actually, great. in agriculture, when you have an agricultural restriction, you have to do agriculture. And it's the same thing. If you have forest restriction, you still have to maintain the forest. Yeah. Okay. As good. part of the. That's great. 
deal. Right. <laughs> so these conservation restrictions are, are flexible mm -hmm. and they can be written. Uh, one of the main points with the town putting town parcels in conservation restriction is for the town to decide what will be allowed, what will not be allowed what is going to be, you know, what would be written into a restriction. Okay. And, and yes. have you researched um, kind of legal people who help decide what those restrictions are? And I'm assuming that all of this land is not something that would be logically developed into anything else. I mean, it's, it's, it's mountainside, it's mountaintop. Um, it's not like a housing development location, uh, not that we would want it to be. I'm just saying it, this would make it an easy decision. If nothing can be built there, um, logically, there's, then there's it's generally locked. true yeah. of these five parcels, right. but not true of the Pine Nook Forest, which is, uh, you know, has 200 feet, more than 200 feet on Pine Nook and would be a developable, developable piece of. Mm -hmm. Except that that was a gift to the town. But it's for a town forest. Yeah, but the deed does not have. I know there's any no restrictions. restrictions. Right. We, we potentially could sell it for a house lot, but <laughs> and and I don't think the town has, of course, any intent of doing yeah. that. Right. And once it's put into, so I was just yeah. looking at: um, is there a resource that doesn't involve town money to come up with the restriction design and language so that uh, we can do this without? any financial implication other than you know maybe getting some money for mm -hmm. offsets I, I think it uh there is a grant program that the, the the state has um for supporting getting conservation restrictions in place um the conservation restriction can uh the town can't both own the land and hold the conservation restriction somebody else has to hold the conservation restriction. Right. And I, ideally it would be the conservation commission, but we've spoken to the chair and they do not have the capacity to do that at this point. Well, so we have been in discussion with Franklin Land Trust. Mm -hmm. They just gonna often say. hold conservation restrictions. Yeah. They know how to do them, they yep. know how to write them, they know how to review, reserve, um, uh, visit them to make sure that they're being properly upheld. And then also just to, to note, CPA money should be available for recreation. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. Um, and so yep. some initial monies that would be required for for, for an assessment, mm -hmm. if we needed legal um, advice, um, a recorder's fee, et cetera, yep. we would be able to apply there for the um for some money yep it would be minimal money because it's boilerplate stuff yeah for the right. most part so largely i'm sorry this is a bad habit of mine i'm sort of talking over julie a lot of what we are ask asking tonight is for you to help us identify who could hold the conservation restriction if well, I, I'm sorry. Go ahead. If I may, can I can I just yeah, do a couple more of yeah, these little yes, guys, yes, and then we'll have an yep. uh, I think a, a good uh, overview. So, yep. Chris, if you would uh, want to go to the next picture, and these uh, are the next slide. These are just nice pictures of where this property is, and it's in a level of detail that's too much for us at this point. So, uh, Chris, if you could go one more slide, and then one more after that. So the motion that the Open Space Committee passed was, uh, as you can see here, and we passed this on uh, August 22nd. And so the reason I wanted to go forward to this is this is these are the specific things that we are interested in having the select board um, think about and, and support. And that would be obtaining conservation restrictions. Um, if we find that that is the best route for, for the preservation, um, helping to facilitate development of the trail network and, because that will, uh, the conservation restrictions will make it possible for us to access uh, different types of 
grant funding. Um, and Chris, if you could do one more. This is the actual last slide, but what we're really seeking is your response as you're doing now to the idea of this project that we're talking about, which is um, protecting these five particular parcels. And, um, and then th there's a whole process of deciding how to do those conservation restrictions, who would hold them, how, to, how they would be um, set up. And then that would be the foundation for us to go into the grant seeking activity um, part of it. But we, we would be doing, doing grant seeking both in the process of putting the protection in place and in the process of developing a trail network um, later. Emma, I see your hand still up. Is it that from the last time or do you have a new question? It's a, it's another one just to say that I I would really like the energy, well, first of all, the energy committee certainly approves of all the work you're doing on open space. Not that I talked to my husband about it or anything, but um, he is listening. And, uh, but I really, and the energy committee certainly appreciates what your, you know, your intention, what you're doing, the incredible work that you're doing. And we, in relation to the sequestration, we, you know, we want to work with you on that and time it in a way that works for you all. Um, and any information you want about that process, either the select board or open space, we're happy to pass that along and, and just sort of make that work uh, as best it possibly can along with the conservation part. So that's it for me. I'm lowering my hand. Thank you. <laughs> Thank you, Emma. Um, I I really appreciate the good job you've done. I have no questions because I support this on it too. Um, do you want to make that a motion right now, or do you want it just consensus that I we mean, move ahead? Yeah, I mean, I I don't. I, I think consensus is better because we don't really have don't a really plan have. that we can right. act on. We support the notion. Yep, a hundred percent. Um. And since there's no, um, you know, there's no real argument about anybody thinking there's value to this land beyond, you know, the the value it brings to citizens to be able to access the wildlife and um, and it gives us an op opens a path to getting money from the state to help us manage a resource um, and will increase tourism potentially. You know, a lot of good things could come out of this and the sequestration question being, you know, one of those. How valuable are offsets? Well, let's go pursue them and find out. Great. Uh, I yeah. think you have 100% of our support and our appreciation. Uh, and thank you for volunteering, yeah. so showing up tonight. I think is the request I, for I, like help doing the uh, find, finding somebody to hold the. I think the Franklin the, Land Trust makes the most sense. Yeah. Um, and, uh, you know, of course, touch. You yeah. have, yes. okay. Deerfield Land Trust merged with them years and years ago, and they have been, you know, reliable and working with us. So, mm -hmm. I mean, I feel very comfortable with them. Mm -hmm. so. I think we will have questions and yeah. um, uh, regarding I, can we access um, time like with a town attorney or somebody who can help us to, uh, I guess. We need to know from the town's point of view what the next step what is. What the next steps are, et cetera. Um, I, well, the, I think the probably the best approach um, when you are talking to the Franklin Land Trust, they have you have um, a, an obligation to make sure that the land remains in the condition that was restricted. So that's a yearly visit. So. I, I think for us as a town, we want to know what they would anticipate um, their, our obligation to them on a yearly basis. And part of the carbon sequestration offset would be to generate income to support the trail system once, you, once it gets in, um, you know, any costs associated with like say washouts or whatever, um, trash pickup. Hopefully we would have a volunteer committee to do that, but you know, you have cutting tree 
cutting whatever over the um, trail. Mm -hmm. um, so you have some costs related to that. Then we can talk about just approaching, um, you know, they could give us a standard boilerplate, a restriction that we could look at as a select board and then pass it on to our legal persons. So the most of the help you would get initially would be through the Franklin Land Trust. How, how do they want to do it? You know, we're inviting them into the our process here to help us. So what what do they want from us? What's the timeline? That kind of thing. Okay. And and any legal questions that you might have, bring them to Casey or Chris Nolan, and uh, mm -hmm. they can, you know, share them with the select board and can figure out how to proceed. Mm -hmm. um, wanted to circle back just to just to make sure. I'm sure that you've been on the CPC and or one of you is on the CPC I now. Guess. That. CPC and open space, they have some weird rules about when they can spend money on trail systems. So just research that because you may think that money is available for a specific, but it isn't, or you may be surprised by what is available. And it could be as weird as an existing trail is not eligible for, but when you're developing a trail, you can mm -hmm. use CPC money. It's It's kind of arcane. So we have your approval to yes to absolutely yep. yep i think there's there's general consensus yeah, sure. that we're absolutely supportive of what you're doing and so very thankful that yeah, someone's thankful looking help. into this yeah do the do the one two and three properties do they actually touch or two of them touch but the third one is not touching or it was hard to tell from this little so Chris, can you go back? my old eyes don't work Chris, so can well. you go back <laughs> <laughs> glasses for uh, um, it, it's um, the the first map. I wasn't sure if. Well. Yeah, here it goes. Oh, sorry, it's a second map. One and three touch, but yeah, it doesn't. Maybe look the two corners of one, one and two. Yeah, yeah. Sure. That's fair. So, um, if you can roll up a little bit so that we can see the bottom a little bit better. Yeah. Yeah. That, that's okay. perfect. Yeah, so, two corners. So the steam mill forest is adjacent to Pecum Duck Rock, obviously, yep. but there are no trails on steam mill forest, and there's no way it's right. it's straight it's up and down there. Yeah. <laughs> so we're not foreseeing that to be part of the um, you know, part of this trail network because it's yep. you can't get there from here. Um, but the pine nook is uh has that one little corner of adjacency with the Come Duck Rock. And I think we would be hopeful that we would be able to get some agreements over time with the uh, with Chase and with the Ann Rogers Trust to be able to use those other connecting trails um, to, to go up there. And then the town has Old Pine Nook as a way to uh, walk down to Pine Nook, but the Pecumtuck Ridge Trail goes off and goes on Deerfield Academy property, so they have to be involved uh, in a trail network. So right now, it, basically, everybody uses everybody else's trails. Um, would you be looking to formalize? Would you be looking to formalize like Eagle Brook land, DA land, town land trails? Uh, when we spoke to the Franklin Land Trust, they talked about the fact that you can create easements that are the width of a trail. Mm -hmm. So we would probably be um, exploring those, that kind of um, a commitment from Deerfield Academy and Eagle Brook. That's what you would get a grant for is the trail development. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And that would cover it. I mean, that's not a, a not, wouldn't be a town expense per se. And I think our, you know, the long-term perspective is if you look across the entire Pecumtuck Ridge, not much of it is per is permanently protected. Um, it doesn't have a lot of, it doesn't have really development pressure, but it's not permanently protected. And we would like to see protection of the Pecumtuck Ridge Trail and just much more permanent protection mm -hmm. uh, in place, either 
well, it could be permanent protection for the land, but it also can be easements for the trails that are already existing out there. The town is um, hopefully going to submit a 604B grant, which is from for DEP to address water coming off of Coptic yes. on both sides. And so hopefully um, when we get that planning grant, we would be able to um, incorporate this into the plan. Great. So we Any hopefully will be in touch. Information you want to give us? Yeah. So we're good. Thank you so much. Thank you very much. Thank, Thank you, you very much. Yep. I really appreciate your work. Thanks, Sue. Good to see you. Okay. Um, good night. Yeah, go ahead. No, I was saying oh, good night. Oh, yeah, good night. Yeah. <laughs> I'm sorry. I thought you were talking. Good night, everybody. Thank you. Um, we're moving on to uh, update on the uh, municipal vulnerability preparedness um, 2.0. And the grant, uh, Chris Curtis and um, Wade Feiden are here um, from uh, the, our newest uh, award. So Chris, would you like to um, introduce yourself again and Wayne and um, give us an update? Sure, um, good evening everybody. Thanks for having us on. Um, as you um, probably know, we've applied for and received two grants this year under the Municipal Vulnerability Preparedness Program. The first one is uh, called MVP 2.0, and uh, it was a grant for $95,000. Uh, it's a program that pays for 100% of the work um, under this particular grant, uh, so no, no match funding. And it's for expanding our MVP core group, um, doing some training for the members of the group and revisiting our MVP plan and, and the uh, resilience priorities that are in that plan. Um, so that's something that I think that the group is excited about doing and kind of updating our um, next steps for what the town would like to see happen uh, on MVP projects going forward. Uh, the second grant was our action grant and that was for $238,000 and that one does have a match associated with it so it's $330,000 altogether with with the match included and that was for three construction projects um, the uh, Leary lot parking lot uh, green infrastructure components uh, the Deerfield Elementary School green entryway which we're doing collaboratively with uh, Darius Modesto and the Regional School District and the Historic Deerfield uh, Green Infrastructure um, component. So we want to try to get started on these projects as soon as possible. We're actually a bit behind schedule already um, on some of them, not through any fault of the town, but the state's been a little slow in getting the documents out and um, we're a bit behind. So we'd like to try to get started as quickly as possible. So there are several contracts on your agenda to, to look at tonight for consultants associated with the projects. Um, and I want to introduce um, Wayne Fiden, who's here with me tonight. Wayne, um, we are suggesting to you as um, a partner consultant uh, with me, basically to help with the MVP 2.0 project. Um, it's a big project and really needs an uh, engagement um, and equity consultant to go uh, along with the work there. Um, and Wayne has uh, pretty extensive experience as he was um, the planning director for the city of Northampton for many years and has his um, own consulting firm now called Plan Sustain. Um, and Wayne, if you want to just uh, say hello and introduce yourself a bit. That'd be great. Welcome. Hi. Thank you all. Um, so some of you may know, I actually worked with Chris when he was still at PVPC and I was still in Northampton. So I have long history with him. Uh, as Chris said, I worked in Northampton, I think for 34 years, um, you know, very different kind of community, obviously than Deerfield, but a lot of engagement processes, a lot of trying to do that kind of work. Um, since I left Northampton about a year and a half ago, I actually have two hats. I have a 
consulting practice that Chris talked about. That's what the contract would be with if you decide to go forward. Uh, and then I also direct a center at UMass, the Center for Resilient Metro Regions. Um, and in both projects, in both areas, I've been doing additional engagement, MVP projects, and, and that kind of work. So I think I bring sort of both uh, the tools that the state would want for the grant in terms of engagement, and then an understanding of the substance of what you're actually trying to do, both for MVP 2.0, and then even I wouldn't be involved for MVP action plan, because obviously we want to make MVP 2.0 set you up for future grants awards. Um, I think that's a quick overview. Uh, yeah, I, I have to say, um, I had the MVP meeting today earlier, and um, I was actually really excited um, that Wayne, um, bringing on Wayne, because um, we needed to develop our story for environmental justice uh, applications. Um, what, I mean, just the 604B, getting ready to submit that, for November 1st, planning grant for, you know, how to deal with water coming off of Pine Nook. And um, there's now a social justice component that I found out about last week and have to go to a training in the next week um, so that we can fill out the application. So it is, it's the new, I don't want to say trend thing, but you have every application that we fill out now has a social justice component. And I think that having Wayne on board to develop, a, a help us with, the, you know, the MVP 2.0, we can develop our story and enhance what we already have um, discussed. And um, I think it will be very helpful. So uh, I'm, I'm supportive of that. Um, did are, you have any questions, Trevor? Are these all funded in the grants already? Yes, that's we have ninety five thousand for um, MVP MVP two point oh. Chris, um, how well, did you um, that ninety five thousand? Could you just go over that budget a little bit, because Trevor? Yeah, and I, I do want to respond to Trevor's question a little bit more specifically as well. Um, the the, in the contract for my services, there are three parts to it. Yep. Um, part A is um, would be for continuing to coordinate the MVP core group, um, doing some training and coordination of the grant, the action grant, to try to bring the, the new person that you're hiring um, for the town planner position up to speed on that and to get them to a place where they can eventually kind of take on a, a greater role in that process. That piece, that's 6,500 um, is not funded by the grant. That's a, that would be a town funded piece. Part B, the 16,000 for the MVP 2.0 is entirely funded by the state grant. And part C is, um, the 8712 is also entirely funded through the uh, the action grant. So just to be really clear about that, um, the MVP 2.0 is a larger grant and it's a two year grant. The first year um, there is $16,000 um, in that grant for Wayne's services and also for my services, those, those two the dollar amounts match and the remaining amount, the remaining amount of the, the year one grant is available to the town to uh, provide a stipend to um, members of the MVP committee who are unpaid um, new volunteers um, to help offset some of their own uh, costs for their time. And that's a choice that the town can make um, about how they want to spend that money. And then there's also a second year of funding in MVP 2.0 that's not reflected in this contract because it's it's next year. And so it's it's not showing up. That's where the rest of the $95,000 um, for MVP 2.0 resides is, is in year two. Does that make sense? Uh, a little bit. That's so a lot of numbers. We don't have a, a grant person yet. And it 
so are, do we want to fund this yet? The thirty five hundred. Well, we it is somebody? because it's to June, and I would anticipate that we'd have somebody on board. Um, hopefully by the winter. And then so, and frankly, you know, the reason that it's in there is is that you don't have anybody on board right now. Somebody has to coordinate the action grant. And we didn't write that into the original grant application because we were thinking at that time that you'd have the town planner on board already, but you don't. So someone has to do that work and, and it has to be done right away. I mean, we had a two hour meeting today. Oh. <sighs> And then, um, and we're going to meet, be meeting. The other thing is, um, uh, Chris Nolan. I haven't even I haven't even talked to Casey yet, but I had already approached Chris Nolan, um, who has been working with the MVP committee. We, you know, when we are doing some public outreach, um, and have some public meetings, so we should be doing some of the basic renewal work for the hazardous mitigation plan. So um, I got to talk to Casey about that, but some of this work is going to be um, double checkoff work. Um, we're hoping to renew the hazardous mitigation. Our, our hazardous mitigation plan does not expire till 2025, but I don't want to wait till next year um, to start working on it. I want to start working on it now. So when we're doing the MVP, 2.0 we can we're also going to be meeting some of the criteria for the criteria. I mean that makes sense right Casey I think you get ahead of hazardous mitigation that renewal I've been through that before you try to get ahead of it it can be a two year process right and there's so, a lot of engagement you have to do with other committees and we have to do that under the 2.0 so you do the 2.0 meetings and you do the hazardous mitigation meetings simultaneously because you're you're, As you're reviewing you know, priorities and you're reviewing um, the hazard mitigation updates. So you like. would have Chris Curtis doing that? No, I'd have Chris Nolan um, be managing that part of it together. You know, he 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 sets up the meetings and he comes to mm, our meetings. Yeah. So he would be working on that as well. So we have a hundred about a hundred and ten thousand worth of. Um, Consulting services in this grant, is that right? It should be ninety five plus. Well, plus the thirty, plus the plus, six thousand five hundred. I think. Yeah, plus the sixty five hundred. So it would be one hundred and one hundred and one five. Is it sixty five hundred? Is that the stipends that you can hand out? No, the sixty five hundred is the Chris's oh. charge for his work at coordinating the grant. Right. The yeah. MVP grants, right? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And that's, is this also written as a two-year plan or is this written as a one-year plan? This is a one-year okay. right now. Okay, right. And so some of it is for work that's already occurred? Will be occurring. Will be occurring. Yeah. Yep. Or it is, well, today. You yeah. Know, two, two, two hour meeting today. Mm -hmm. And I know that we don't have this funded yet, right? So I believe we're going to um we're especially asking for like 9200 92, from the um free cash free, free cash. cash I'm guessing the motion will say free cash right that's usually what and that's in a meeting that's the usually contract what we if you don't have it funded but um right I don't know so our match is not funded we've received the grant paperwork Right. Um, we do need to confirm the match, so we need to get that funded at town meeting. Right. Yeah. Um, as far as the hazardous mitigation stuff, there's a prescribed process for that. It is. It's. It's. This is fire chiefs, the Darius from the superintendent of schools. Everybody has to have. You have X number of meetings. You have to meet. Right. Review. And usually, you use a consultant to sort of help you go through that. Yes. At least that was my experience in Asheville. And that's what we were going to do. Double track. Start that process. John, John Pachork and I thought we could do start the process and do it ourselves. And Chris was going to do some, Chris Nolan was going to do some research on the, um, how difficult it is, going, you know, if there's new requirements. Mm. But the social justice, I'm sure if they throw that in as a requirement, our social justice work that Wayne's doing will be able to answer some of those questions too. 
the new pieces. And part of, of the MVP 2.0 is is the um, doing is identifying your vulnerable populations. Mm -hmm. Yep. And that also dovetails the work we we're trying to do down here in the village. What we were so worried about or what I'm extremely worried about, if that rainstorm we had in the north end of town was just a couple miles more south, we would have had people literally in homes that they would not be able to stay in. So our whole idea is to identify vulnerable population here in the village, and that's seniors that are living in homes that are not flood proof, um, you know, that kind of thing. So Wayne's gonna be working on that. Um, I, I think my only hesitation is that we we do this every year is that we sign contracts that we don't actually have funding for yet, and I know it's always chasing the it, it, it could chase be it's matter. chasing that it, it's because the problem with the MVP is you never know if you're going to get it, so you right. apply for it, you get it, but you haven't funded it yet. So then you sign contracts for stuff that you haven't actually got funding for yet, which is problematic for me. Not that I don't agree with you know. We so, do this every year, though. It's not like it's um, new. We've done it with this program ever since the beginning. Well, so maybe the language you could add is um, pending, pending approval confirmation. Of town uh, yeah, pending yeah. approval of town meeting. Yeah, I mean we've done that in other contracts. That's, <laughs> I mean, to me, that's normal. This is funding the Leary lot, which we're going to go mm -hmm. ahead on. Yeah. Um, the entryway that we talked about at the elementary school, we're moving ahead on. Mm -hmm. um, the only one that is actually not already started is is the tree box area mm -hmm. in old deerfield north of the deerfield end so i um but a lot of this work like uncovering the social resilience and you know um roadmap of of our vulnerable groups all this work that wayne and chris will be doing will be part of our hazardous mitigation renewal and our stories for every grant that we apply moving forward. It seems that's going to be the requirement um, necessary mm -hmm. for all the, um, yep. like our geothermal grant. The One of the thing. things that I, 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 this is the future. I mean, everything that we are going to do, getting money from state or federal government is going to have this factored in, into it for a period of time. And, we need to do a better job of identifying what our uh, social justice strengths are in terms of applying for these things. I I think we we can do better than we have in the past. You know, we have um, a lot of diversity in in town that is not identified, and some of it will never be able to be recognized because it involves students who don't mm -hmm. call this their primary residence or whatever. But um, there are other, um, you know, opportunities that we need to unpack. And so, but I agree with you, Trevor. I, I, it's frustrating when you're making a decision that doesn't line up with the application process that, yeah, you know, the state just doesn't have everything line up. And years ago, we had talked about funding, taking free cash or something at some point and putting it in an account. I talked about this last night at the finance committee meeting when we were talking about this article that, you know, we don't, you know, we should fund something ahead of time so that we have the money and we can feel more comfortable about, you know, signing a contract for something that you know you have funding for. I know, but the state, the state was supposed to get this paperwork to us, you know, months ago. Um, and they've delayed. Mm -hmm. uh, they delayed the whole uh, announcement. How how many months was this delayed? This was like three or four months delayed, right, Chris? At least at least two, anyway. Yeah, yeah. I, I I mean, okay. it is frustrating. Yeah, <clears throat> but so the unfunded part of this is a sixty five hundred dollars for the uh, contract no, of the contract. All of it. All, all of it. it. We have no funding set aside for any of this. Well, I, I'm not sure. What's all of it mean? The our match, one hundred and ten. Oh, thousand. What's our match on this? One hundred and ten thousand. Well, again, it's it's more complex than that. The, the MVP two point grant has no match. 
So anything that you see that's listed under MVP 2.0, that's all state funded. So in, in the case of the contract for me, the $16,000 is entirely state funded. The MVP action grant does have a match um, that's required. And so there is a, a component of that um, in, in the consultant contracts that's there's a minor component that's match. Um, and then the part A of my contract would be entirely town funded. So, uh, so all of Wayne's contract uh, for plan sustain is entirely state funded. But, and we do have to come up. What, what I'm saying is the 95 or $92,000 that we need to fund all of this year's MVP stuff has not been funded yet. Right. That's what we're asking for. Right. But yes, he's right that some of it will be paid by state money. Some of it we're paying for the actual project itself, that kind right. of thing. I mean, what's the total value of the project and what is our match for it? I mean, it's always better to talk in terms of... Yep. It's 338000 I think. Because I don't have any... The, the, it's 330000 total. 238000 of it is grants. And so our match is one hundred and two. Okay, so our portion of the three hundred and thirty is one hundred eight. Excuse me, is, is one hundred and eight. Okay. Yeah. Plus, we have the sixty-five that was not funded. Sixty-five hundred. Yeah. Yeah, of Christmas. So I would, I would make the motion that we sign the contracts, um, because the only part that's not covered by one hundred percent by the grant is Chris's sixty-five hundred which I would say is subject then to town meeting vote, um, of, you know, approval at town meeting, and that we just move the, forward. Well, the the 90 something thousand that we have to go for is unfunded. So right. that, I mean, that's we have to right. get that. I mean, it's the, the question of part of the, is part of this action grant related to the Leary lot? Yes. So a portion of that we can fund with ARPA. But yeah, basically what we're saying is that we need to fund whatever we need to fund, mm -hmm. um, but we're not going to not take the MVP grant for the Leary lot. And, um, you know, I guess if we, so if it make it, you know, basically we can't move forward on the MVP part of this until the contract's signed, right. because then we have to have two recognized hearings Yep. before we can spend the MVP money. And if we don't sign the contract, then we can't have the meetings. We can't, we can't have, have the meetings. meetings. And it's an endless circle. So I guess that I guess for my for my peace of mind, I think we if we are if say town meeting votes down the MVP, just not interested. So we would have to come up with another alternative and it would need to be ARPA. It to would, fund it. Yeah. Probably your sources are yeah. And basically what we would be doing in that unfortunate situation would be taking the ARPA money that we had originally des designated for the HVAC system in the police station yeah. and channeling it into this project, which right. is an infrastructure project, which right. makes kind of sense to me. Mm -hmm. um, Just but, want to make sure that we're all on page that we'll yeah. fund it one way or the other. Yeah, it, yeah, and we have the discretionary money to do it. We, I would it's our decision to use the ARPA money right. how we want it. So, But I would prefer for the town to fund it. Fund it. Yes, with free cash. Free, free and I cash. know that we've got you know some issues about cash flow, et cetera, coming up, and uh, mm -hmm. got to respect those. But you know, I agree with you, Trevor, that we need to kind of set up some sort of funding mechanism that uh, doesn't require us to go and wait six months to but get it's... action on something because it's it's just every not, year we do it. It's not a way to run a right. business. Exactly, and this is a business. Whether yep. anybody wants it is. To... You're absolutely right. Okay, I'm fine then. Casey has a comments you'd like to make so chris for purpose of chris um curtis so for purposes of our funding match i have ninety two thousand one seventy six, just as a round number um in a revision to the warrant for the fp <laughs> grant match is that right that is the that is the correct right. number okay good thank you yeah. and again what our original anticipation when we wrote the grant was that of that 92,176, uh, the Leary lot piece, which is 33,571, would come from ARPA. 
Mm -hmm. so that the town's actual ask of town meeting would be the difference between those two numbers. Okay. Does that make sense? Well, that's what I was wondering. At yeah, so it'd be meeting. smaller than that. Yeah. I mean, it, instead of being 92,176 or whatever the number was, it would be 60,000 something. Right. And that, that, that that's was right. my question yeah. last night. That's right. Audience, what, how this was going to, I thought some of that, our yeah, theory lot was going to get funded by us. MVP lot. is agnostic about where our money is coming from, right? Correct. It's not like saying, oh, you're spending ARPA money. It doesn't no, count. No, no. It can't come from state sources. The, the match can't come from state sources. Right. right. ARPA and, and free cash are not considered state sources. Right. So we're good. Yeah. Okay. Well, that's good. Thanks, this, Chris. This Thank is you. on the warrant, though. Yes. Yes. The We're, MVP grant match is on the warrant. Right, so, and yeah. I had changed, I went back and I looked at Chris's spreadsheet and I revised the number to 92176. Right. Right. So you guys are going to need to confirm that when you go yes, through the warrant tonight. Correct. So I just wanted to be sure that I was on that that was the number yep. I was looking at based on Chris's right, we have a little bit spreadsheet. Number. Yeah. Chris Curtis's okay. spreadsheet. Thanks, Chris. All right. Yes. So I'm good. All right, so do we need a, is motion. There a motion to be made? To sign the contracts. Okay, well, I don't even know which contracts we're talking about. Is, is there one for Chris and then there's one, one for Wayne? For, yes. yes. This is Wayne's is well, plans. Well, do Chris okay. first. So um, I make a motion that the select board approve. Um, and were you authorizing Casey to sign these things? Um, I'm going to sign them. Um, or is the I think Carolyn there's a, signing them? I think yeah. there's, if you look in the signature file, I think it's, it's uh, all three Chris, of us. It's all three of us. Okay. Yeah. Chris all right. had all three of you on. All right. Very good. So um, I make a motion to um, that the select board approve a contract for Christopher Curtis to um, provide services related to town's municipal vulnerability preparedness uh, program and MVP2 grant. Uh, for coordination services for the uh, two-year period of 2023-2024. For the do we uh, have to say a number? Mm -hmm. Um. Yep. We should. Yes. Uh. Did you add that up, Trevor? Well, no. I added all of them up. Yeah. It should be sixty-five hundred. Yep. Uh, forty-five thousand. The number for the contract for my contract total is thirty one thousand two hundred and twelve. It's it's in the first page of the contract. Thank you. Okay, so that's the amount. Okay, in the amount of thirty one thousand two hundred twelve dollars. Okay. All right. I'll second the motion. Is there any further discussion? No. All those in favor? Tim Hilchie, aye. Trevor McDaniel, aye. Carolyn Ness, aye. Okay. There you go. And then we've got. Uh, now, is there a number? Wayne. Is there a number in this contract? Sixteen thousand. Sixteen thousand for Wayne. Sixteen thousand round. Yeah. No, no yep. sense. Okay. No sense. <clears throat> I make a motion that the select board approve a contract for Wayne Fighten. Did I say that correctly? Under uh, plans, I'm, plan sustain Inc. Plans to plan sustain Inc. Um, for um, services to be provided in coordination with uh, the town's municipal vulnerability preparedness action grant, MVP2 grant, and grant coordinate, coordination services for 2023-2024 in the amount of $16,000. Second. Uh, just Trevor. one one correction. I'm sorry to interrupt, um, Tim, but Wayne's services are only for one year. Wayne services are only for the MVP 2.0 grant. Okay. Right. So the, what's on this is so fine um i'll make a motion to ask the select board to approve a contract for uh plan sustain inc and uh, wayne fighting to provide services related to the mvp2 grant uh for 2023-2024 in the amount of sixteen thousand dollars second okay if there's no more further information or discussion i um We'll accept a vote. Tim Hilchi, aye. Trevor McDaniel, aye. Carolyn Ness, aye. Okay. You can sign. Yeah. Can I steal your pen? So, so we do have um, some additional items to consider as well. Okay. Um, and those are the engineering services contracts. You want me to speak to those? Yes. 
So for the MVP action grant, um, each of the three construction projects um, requires an engineer to um, to oversee the construction and do construction administration. Um, in some cases, update plans um, and do permitting, et cetera. Um, so for the Leary lot, there is funding for Berkshire Design to do that work. And for the um, Deerfield Elementary School, Green Entry, and the historic Deerfield tree box filter, there is funding that was uh, targeted for EBI. Um, we don't have, I don't believe we have a contract prepared for your um, review on those yet, um, but we were hoping, I think, to get approval to move forward with those contracts. Mm -hmm. Now that I have your approval to help with administration, I can help put those contracts together. We um I, we had a meeting earlier with. Well, do you have a comment, Casey? In terms of those contracts, I'd like to use town template contracts. For yeah, that. I would too. Yeah. Um, we had a discussion with Darius um earlier in the meeting, and then um he was going to reach out to EBI, I think, and, and probably you, and have a a discussion about the, you know, what it would cost to kind of pull the two aspects of that project together because you have the MVP part of the project and you've got the hardscape part of the project and just trying to kind of flush out a plan and how much that would cost. So I think we'd probably come back to that one and sign off once that's kind of nailed down. But the Leary lot and the tree box, I think is, I don't know, and you don't have a figure on those yet then, but you're just going to go through and talk I, to them about what we're, you know, get a final. I can give you the figure for the Leary lot. Um, okay. For construction oversight, it's uh, from the MVP grant is twenty five thousand, um, but that was actually now that I look at the detailed budget, it's coming out of the match. So that's the ARPA money component of that task, and maybe you've already, um, maybe you've already covered that in terms of a contract with Berkshire Design. I, I think we have, because Berkshire Design's been working on it right away. Right, Chris, uh, Chris, you've, uh, Nolan, that you've been working with Berkshire Design. Uh, uh, we signed that contract for the Leary lot, right? Right, that is all set. Yep. Okay. 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 So, the tree so why don't we hold off on the, the other EBI related contract until we get um, all the numbers from Darius yeah. and then we could move forward with that. Yep. Be great. And I understand which contract format that you want to use now. Chris, that's the one that you sent me earlier today. Yes, okay. that is the the town's boilerplate engineering contract. Um, it should end up looking a lot like that. Okay. And Chris, just to so, start, just so you know, um, in our discussion with Darius, I may have misrepresented this, so I want you to correct us if I was incorrect. EBI designed an entryway, but it had envisioned different materials being used. Now um, they're talking about using stamped stamped asphalt or, or something like that. Um, but I don't know that the plan has changed all that much. So when you and Darius talk to EBI, verify how much more engineering are they actually going to have to do right. on the hardscaping because it's there is a design there. Yeah, <laughs> That's correct. Yeah. So most of the work that we had anticipated was construction administration work. Mm -hmm. So o oversight of the construction and, and, you know, the, the drawings that are needed for that, et cetera. So, um, yeah, I'll, I'll work with Darius with your permission and, and come up with a contract that's agreeable to everyone. That'd be great. That'd be great. Okay. All right. Is there any other questions? Uh, nope. cause we had the meeting today. Most, mm -hmm. most of our questions were answered. Yeah, so I'm good. Okay. Yeah. All and right. so once that's, Parts done, Chris Curtis. If you could, uh, obviously, you're going to cycle it back through Casey and Chris Nolan, and uh, yeah, so that they can have our town council just run their eyes over it. Yes, we'll, we'll do. Thank you. Thank you. All right. Thanks very much, everyone. All right. Thank you, um, Wayne and thank Chris, you. for coming. Yeah, thanks, Wayne. Thank you so much. Look forward to working with you. And it, well, it was a lovely meeting today. So, I mean, I felt like it was productive. So, thank you. Thank you. Um, Thank you both. Have a good night. Have a good night.
Uh, we have select board announcements. Just want to make sure people are aware that the Heritage Weekend um, at PBMA and and then down here in South Deerfield um, for the 350th is um, the 14th and 15th. Not this weekend, but the following weekend. Okay. MA, I'm sorry. I see your hand up. Public comments. Uh, just, I just wanted to check in about public comment so I can leave you alone for the rest of the evening. Oh, okay. Um, one, one quick question. Sure. Um, and Tim and I have gone back and forth on this, but uh, uh, Newpro has purchased the house on Sugarloaf Street that has a uh, tracker, a fairly substantial solar tracker system in their yard and new pro wants it gone and solar store the uh, claire chang from from greenfield solar contacted me and i forwarded it to the three of you but the but uh what solar what the greenfield solar is saying is if deerfield the town wants it they will help with all the moving of that tracker system but they'll need to be paid. Panels. The, to, and then the town could put it anywhere they wanted. It's really nice yeah. tracker system. So uh, two things, like you're gonna run that through KC. Um, and also when you say solar trackle, is, is this like a 16 or a 20 or a 24 or 26 panel solar array I, that tracks? I, I, what, what I am proposing, if it's okay with you all, is for me to collect the information if you'd give me permission to contact Solar Store and and the and New Pro person whose name is Jane Goodrow, uh, or Goodry, and Goodry, I think it is, and I will get her number and I will get you all the information that's necessary to even begin to consider this. But I need your permission to move forward with that. We have a use for it. What do we think? Hey, we, we, we I think we I'm afraid that's valuable things for a long time. We got Lupro it. will crash it, so I know we they want it. they want it gone. Get rid of that. Yeah, I mean, it, I don't see why we should shouldn't even look into to to it. I mean, obviously, we need to know what's its what's its generating capacity. And exactly, it, it's probably worth a lot of money. Yes, um, and it. If we could find a place to to use it, I don't see why we wouldn't. You put it in my yard. Uh, you know, we could put. <laughs> <laughs> my suggestion would be the elementary school because mm -hmm. that's the only town property that isn't being dug up right now, or proposed to be dug up. Yeah, but but yeah, so definitely, I'm. I mean, we I would. We should the sewer treatment plant, can we? I don't know if they have room or whatever. I don't know. Yeah, I mean, I don't see why we shouldn't look into it so okay. we can make an informed decision about whether yeah. it's anything that we should keep. Uh, that, that's my thought. I mean, I, I have no idea. It may be over the top. Casey would like to speak with you. <laughs> Casey would like to ask a question. So I guess my question, MA, is what is it going to cost for us to utilize that? Because that would be an unanticipated cost. Absolutely. Absolutely. And that's what I want to find out. I'm going to mm -hmm. find out what what I understood is that we can probably have the system for free, but moving it is is going to be is going to cost but not nearly what it would cost to buy a whole new system yeah and we have a dpw building that's got a lot of space in I it that's right that. nearby we're, we're supposed to unload that Ab absolutely that's another place yeah. that isn't going to propose to be dug up you wants that as well oh no i meant the, he meant the yes. highway garage oh the highway garage. highway garage yeah yeah, yeah. so okay. Anyhow, yeah. let me. If you're, it's okay with you. I'll find out as much information as yeah. I can in what the next it? couple of days. Yeah. Cost. Yep. Yeah. Cost. <laughs> and, uh, Ma, do you mind talking to Kevin and see, you know, because I don't even know how much space is in the highway garage. But that was just a suggestion. My, yeah. my thought is that I, that I talked to Claire because they offered to engine, you know, to oversee the moving of it. I don't okay. know how much that'll cost. And I'll I'll find out what new pro you know I think they're willing to just get rid of it, but that's a conversation. And then probably talk to I I'm guessing the solar store was the original installer installer of that. 
And so they will know the production and, and all that information, what it does. So um, I'll get back to you with that. And I mean, before I talk to Kevin, that's probably the initial right. information we need. I mean, yep. Kevin might want to put it in the salt shed or, yeah. you know. Yeah, whatever. I mean, yeah, maybe you know, I, I, think that, I think that's a secondary decision if once you decide to go ahead with it. Is okay. that good? Yes. yes. Yep. All and right. Thank you. I will leave you, you alone we give you, for the evening. Can we give you a deadline? Can we uh, give this information by, like next Wednesday? Uh, sure. Next Wednesday. Sh I should have collected all that information. Thank you. Okay. Yeah. Okay. That will, that will give us time to put it on the agenda. Thank you. All right. Moving on. Um, so I just wanted to say the whopping road work has started. Um, I, I was I went through there. It looks like it's going to be good. The meeting on Friday. There's a meeting on Friday with Concom and the contractor on um, up by five and ten, where that all that big backup is happening and it's encroaching in the road. Dollar numbers for this stuff. Yes. I mean, we got to stop until we know. Oh no, I know, I know. Very I know. concerned about that. We just keep rolling. I know. We're going to be talking about that. Yep. Um, and then we had an excellent meeting with Melissa Hoffa, all three of us, yep. and Denise Mason. Um, and then we had a productive meeting in the evening with Ann Gobi and yeah. Joe Cumberford was there. Natalie was there. Sorry, Kristen Aleko was, was there from the right. governor's representative. So I... Great turnout. I stayed till the bitter end Did you? to Good. keep pushing for money. So... Oh, thank you. I think we will thank be making it. But oh well, thank you for all three of you for standing up. So um is there any other select board comments? I know uh, you've been working hard on oh um, yeah, there's there's a couple of things I just wanted to say that we're um working with the Eagle Brook and West Smith um to try and come up with a plan to um revitalize the fellowship hall for use temporary use to begin with as the new home for the library during the construction project um and we'll be holding a meeting uh, with the library folks next week just so they can see the the space but um i think a lot of good things are going to come out of it and and uh you know um deerfield academy was initially going to be doing some work there but um, because of their construction conflicts, uh, we we asked the Eagle Book if they would step in, and um, so we're really appreciative of the fact that they're doing Great. that work. And, Immediate response. And we're going to see uh, some big changes, I think, in the next month or two, and great. we're looking forward to it. Yeah. And uh, awesome. so I want to thank Wes and and uh, Andy Chase and everybody at Eagle Brook for stepping up and helping us out. Great. And this would be in lieu of their gift, right? This is this would be a, a in this would be in lieu of um, certain money that they were talking about giving us for other projects, and so yeah. it's yet to be determined what that gift will be. But certainly, we'll acknowledge them both the special town meeting and probably the annual town meeting yeah. because um, you know they're really going to be helping us out quite a bit. Right, they moved on it really fast. Okay. Yes, we had discussions with D. A. Sullivan, uh, is the contractor on the the Greenfield Library, and um, that's the the group that um, Eagle Brook anticipates hiring to do all the various things, ADA compliant bathroom ramp, right. um, refinishing the interior spaces so that they'll be fresh and painted yeah. and the floors refinished and um, yeah, a lot of good work. Right. I know there is a leak in the roof. You probably mentioned it to people. Yeah, and, an, and a new roof yes. on yep. the lower section of the building. So right. an entirely new roof. No old shingles. Good. <laughs> so, Speaking of shingles, I received an email from Dan Pallotta. He wants us to pick a shingle. Um, and this is unanticipated, but I guess we need to get back to him ASAP. Are they going to be shingles? Shingles? They're going to be like shingles for the room. Architectural shingles. About. Yeah. Yeah. So how many ply are they? Really cool so recycled tire slate roof today. It was hmm? Awesome. Yeah. It's yeah. a shingle roof now. Spindle, yeah, this is going to be your basic traditional. Yeah. How how thick are they? Though, Thirty year. Thirty five year. I, I'm I'm yeah. saying we get the. What happened? I think is that the old, the the church resurfaced the roof with, the twenty five oh. year ago shingles. No, you were talking. Were you talking about Dan at the library? Dan Pilata. No, he's asking us right now for this building. No, for for, for this building. 
the, oh, okay. for the yeah for the sure church. okay I was right. confused for the um roof work that has to happen on fellowship hall right okay I thought you were talking about for the picture I know what he thinks and I know what I think but yeah I don't want to get in trouble for picking the wrong thing yeah let's pick a uh, yeah so okay. it's an item unanticipated anticipated he's saying ASAP so give me two minutes to go print this good okay, okay. he's got some pictures that's great he's got pictures well we want to make sure that's the 35 year roof one. Oh yeah no it's got to okay. be the okay um so trevor you had so had a, had a great um our 28th meeting at the um wastewater treatment plant today our monthly 28th monthly meeting um we're getting close on that um the the grit the grit king motor which pulls the grid out has been mal malfunctioning right that's the one thing we held back uh substantial completion on and held back up some money on because um, they've been fighting. They've taken that motor out twice. It's going up to um, Applied Dynamics up in Greenfield. That's where the vendor wants it to go for testing. It's either a cable or it's the motor shot. So it's brand new. And it just it comes on, it runs, and then it shuts off. It runs, it shuts off. So they've been fighting with it for months. And we're like, Ouch. one more shot and a whole new unit's going in. So we probably will not go back to that vendor. We'll probably buy it from another vendor, but we held up enough money back from them to just buy a different motor. So that's the one thing that had, has they've been fighting with there. Um, clarifier walls are up. Uh, they're working on that secondary clarifier right now. The aeration walls are up. They poured the, um, the, the, um, the wall that splits the north aeration tank together. They poured that today. Some other spots they poured, they've paved. Um, some sections will come back and pave some more. Uh, so that they hope to be out of there probably by Christmas with most of the construction work and cleanup. And then they'll be back in the spring for uh, substantial completion and completion. I think April and May are the substantial and then completion. That's like seeding the grass. Yeah, seeding the grass, cleaning yeah. up, freshening yeah. up, any punch list stuff. They're already working on some punch list stuff. But um, so it's coming along really good. So we're getting down to the... Um, using up our grant money so we have uh another change order uh which would be the headworks fencing and the gate for the fencing which we kind of verbally approved but that would be in that next change order there's a SCADA SCADA is your emergency alarms that go to your phone and that stuff and that the clarifiers have never had and it wasn't in the original bid to put um uh, alarms on those, but we felt like based on the last one, when it froze and had it damaged, had we known we could have gotten there and fixed it before it froze right up. So um, we were going to put um, SCADA stuff on the clarifiers. Uh, so these are two things that we need to talk about. And um, then there's final site drainage modifications, which would be taking the drainage into the effluent pipes and trying to clean up. There's a lot of water that comes down that property and settles in the back. And the idea is to kind of deal with that water. Absolutely. That's like 62,500. So right now we have about $97,000 um, with the change orders um, above, that would be about 87,000. So it leaves us around nine to 10,000 bucks left for the project from our initial borrowing from using up the grant money. So I was concerned that um, doesn't leave us much money, but the whole idea is to use it up because it's grant money. That's what we're into now. Our loan is paid off and, you know, I mean, we got our loan and so all of that's done. This is all grant money. So we'd like to kind of use it up. Um, but I didn't know what your guys, if you guys felt comfortable enough. I think we're I far enough along there really isn't there's no more excavation. There's no more like, oh my God, we got to put a foundation wall in somewhere. Uh, the only thing I'd be concerned about is the motor. Yeah. Yeah, we sure. already have the money held. That's aside from that. We oh, have okay. like 97. And we know that we can buy the motor for the same price that yeah. we set aside money for. Right. Yeah. We've got plenty okay. held back on that. And uh, we have no issues with any of the well, stuff Trevor, there. It's would, just a matter I, of. Why would you give even nine or ten thousand dollars? Well, we could, and once we got to the end, there are some other things we could get, like 
you know, we need a maybe a mower for there. The certain things that we could do to finish up that amount of money so that we're not giving I, it back I, I to the like feds. Yeah, and yeah, and, we would and like it too. But have we budgeted for the the shrubs that or the the trees that we're going to plant next? That summer? was that nine. Like we were thinking at the end, let's get some arborvitaes to break down the wind from across that right. field because right. that field just blows north mm -hmm. uh, from there, and that's what that's what Eric would really love is to put some trees or shrubbing along that that stretch. Yeah, that makes sense. Break, break the wind, sense. so it's not whipping across the the uh, air that fires. That makes really stuff. sense. So that's that's and the thought the with the of, And this is the time of year you want to plant them, yeah. actually. Yeah. So I would tell Kevin that. So um, we, so I'll have them put together a change order for these four items, and then um, and then if they later on if they bring us in, do you want to vote for that right now? Uh, no, no, because I don't have it in a change order format. Okay. I just, they wanted, I really, they were like, should we go ahead? And I said, I really want to talk to everybody about it first and make sure um, you're comfortable moving forward. They I, don't see I, any I, other things coming out. You know, we used all I, of I would use other some of that 10,000 towards the right. Yeah. Okay. Sounds That's, good. Yep. All right. That's it. We can talk about the other thing later. Because Brenda has a meeting on the hearing on the rates next uh, on friday friday with friday. justin yeah. Yeah, yeah with justin and casey yeah. and, um you're we were just a consensus you're you're fine with what trevor's proposing. moving forward on the oh yeah and yeah drainage that's fine. And stuff yeah. okay and, and then we'll get another one later so i'll i'll we'll bring a change order i, I also meeting. told them to go ahead with the herbivites because this is yeah. the time of year you plant stuff right now mm -hmm. okay like right now so he needs to get them yeah all right we'll yeah we're talking like ones that get tall yes yeah they kind of break that wind there oh yeah yeah okay how big okay. are they they like start out small and they get i big. know that's the problem they start out small <laughs> right and it takes a few years for them to yeah. get tall we'll see how well you know what's the but best value we can't put mature ones in unfortunately but i know yeah. find something i yeah. will say that i planted you know Two and a half foot tall ones that I bought over in Sunderland. Yeah. About five years ago, and they're twenty five feet tall. No kidding! Yeah. Wow. And I can't see the railroad tracks anymore. Wow. So that's was that great. the purpose? That yeah. was on purpose. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> um, okay. Moving on. Board of Health announcements. Um, the new vaccine uh, does cover Omicron BA four and BA five plus a new strain of XBB one point five. So if you have the opportunity, please get it. We're trying to sort out the October thirteenth clinic. It's already full because we only had one hundred and eight. If they were COVID signed flights. up for that already, are they good? Oh yes. So they, yes. yeah, somebody had said, I said, oh, we're really tight. And they said, well, we got slots. And we're like, yeah. I think you're good then. If you've you're got good. Slot, we have 108. Yeah. We're still trying to trying to negotiate more. Yeah. We have the flu shots. And then on the um October 27th, it looks like we're going to be able to get three or four hundred COVID shots for the 27th. So we have not put the link out because we haven't gotten confirmation of the amount of COVID shots. So okay. we'll have flu shots again. Yep. But we don't have confirmation of the amount of COVID shots. So as soon as I get that link, I will send it to Trevor. It will be on Deerfield Now. It will be on our webpage. I'll yep. send it to Chris to make sure he posts it on our webpage. And okay. People will have it to sign up. Okay. Um, and Joe Comerford had, uh, I let her know that Health New England was not covering the COVID shots because they were considering us out of network. So she got on it like immediately awesome. and it was resolved Friday. So right. Health New England now will cover the shots. Um, okay, moving on. Minutes of 9 6 23. I'll make a motion to approve the minutes of 9 6 2023. I'll second that. Um, all those in favor? Tim Hilchey, aye. Trevor McDaniel, aye. Carolyn Ness, aye. Okay. One day um, liquor license approval for PVMA for the 14th. Yep. Uh, 12 to 4 Eastern uh, European Heritage Festival. Also, a request to waive the permit. I'll make a motion to approve the one day liquor license for the PVMA uh, October 12th, October 14th, 12 to 4 p.m. liquor license and um, that we would uh, waive the fees. Okay. I'll second that. Is there any further discussion? Nope. Hearing none, all those in favor? Tim Hilchey, aye. Trevor McDaniel, aye. Carolyn Ness, aye. I don't oh. see the copy of insurance on this one, though. Do we have it? Um, yes, it was actually just brought over today. Okay, thank you. Thank you. Sure. Appreciate that. Uh, All right. Next sure. item on the agenda is the town meeting special. 
uh, town meeting warrant. Yep. Okay. Right. So what you see in front of you is what councils reviewed plus what I've included for the finance committee's recommendations. They only got through a few of the articles. Um, and if you want to go article by article, we can, because there's a couple yep. of questions they had and Trevor was there um, while they chewed on some of this. So the first article they recommended, it is a nine tenths vote because it's a prior year bill. Yep. Um, article two and three. So after there was some conversation before the finance committee meeting where Kevin, I believe is going to try to cover the $3,000 yeah. cost for the eight, for the AED. Yeah. Um, and finance committee was happy to hear that. So, and they said, if he's in trouble at the end, they'll, you know, if we need to transfer at the end of the year, they'll, they'll happy to do that. So right. we, they're we happy to consider it. So article. the recommendation was to strike this article and that was, the request that came from um, Kevin, Brenda, and Julie. Okay, yeah. so, so we agree. Yes, the finance committee did evaluate it. They said if it stayed on, they would recommend it. But yep. it'd be so, better if they didn't see it. So, so we're going to strike that, right? So yes. my request to the board is to strike that. Yep. Yep. Um, the next one is the ninety five hundred dollars for the installation of pedestrian crossing lights. And we went round and round about this. And one of the things, and Trevor wasn't privy to this we conversation. We'll strike it because, yeah. So okay. what what Trevor had said, and there's complete there's money that was appropriated for um, complete street work streets work that sort of connected with the common, but it I, does say complete streets in the article language. And one thing that that is part of complete streets is crossing. So complete streets includes livability, walkability. So crossing areas, I th I don't know if you've seen it, but a lot of the complete streets projects that happen with the state, they do crossings and they do pedestrian lights and that sort of thing. So Trevor had talked to the finance committee about that. When I first um, started the town common committee, we had applied for complete streets money for doing the common and then talking with Jeff Upton and we all kind of figured, hey, wait a minute, this because once we found out the town owned most, I mean, the state owned most of it and we couldn't use complete streets, um, they had asked me to apply again the following year for um, just town common engineer money. So that the first 40,000 is sat in an account. We haven't touched it. We were gonna wait and kind of maybe use it in front of Cheslicks, you know, other places that we could use it. Um, we could, it's been sitting there for three, four years. We could just use some of that money on this instead of having to do it well, free because tax. we are um it's cash safety trap. stuff yeah i think well, it makes sense safe. and if we yeah. need yep. you know we can ask later for other stuff but i think it makes sense to use, use okay that. so it so that was the other request is to Scratch. if we use it that way strike the 9500 yep yep there I, was I, some concern about from the finance committee about sort of right. transparency of, of use of funds, but complete streets often will include these crossing sites. There was also concern whether that was the right spot for it. Um, you know, where where the light are the light crossing, is a crossing going to be right in the parking lot of the farm stand or is or the other concern was a lot of people zip by the library should there want be one there or are there any signs before that? We didn't see all the plans, so I don't really know all of that. But Anyways, yeah, the well, that's is Pleasant Street the one that that goes right yeah. after the yes. uh, car quest? Yes, exactly. Right, and so I think it's the safest. That's the logical day. Yeah, that's yeah. the logical place to put it. And plus, yeah. don't want to do anything at the library because there's going to be all sorts of landscaping done there, and you want to make sure that you do it once. Right, I agree with that. Yep, that was just okay. Wrong. So let's we're agreeing to strike that. Yep. Um, Okay, nine, so the four, article this four is the ninth. So that's what I want to make sure. Is. So it's 92,176. That's the right number. Yeah. Um, and finance committee recommended it pending CIPC's recommendation. And so I sent an email out yesterday as I was listening to the meeting um, asking CIPC to meet. There's one person I don't have an email address for, but Mark promised to help me find that. And yeah, I mean, if... If you are you're in CIPC, right, Carolyn? Yes. Mm -hmm. So if you can say this is this is the maximum it would be because we've already discussed that 
it might be less than that. Well, that's my question. You can't go up at town meeting, but you can go down. I want to leave it like this. Yeah, until exactly. This is... That's what I thought you guys might want yeah. to do. But what I meant was CIPC should know that this is the maximum amount we need. That's why we're asking for it. But right. it could be that we won't expend all this amount of money. Yeah. Um, does that make sense? Mm -hmm. Or use other funds for it. Or use other um, funds for it. Yeah. Okay, well, so they may you ask know, you what other you... funds you might want to use, and it well, sounds like it would be ARPA. Yeah, yeah, it's it's what's already committed to the Leary lot. It's the match. Yeah, um, okay. ARPA covered. So, um, Casey, just just to let you know, um, you were going to try to do the CIPC on um, the tenth or the eleventh. Mm -hmm. Okay, perfect. Just let me know. Let me. They need to look at. The we page. have time to do. We have time to post for the uh, the tenth, right, Chris? If you do it tomorrow, you can. If we do, do it, it tomorrow, we have time to post. Is what I. Think. Yeah. Yes. Yep. Yeah. So just let me know if it's uh, okay. I'm, I'm available both the tenth and the eleventh. Okay. I already have meetings the rest of the week, so. Finance committee has a meeting on the eleventh as well. I think it's at six. Is that what I heard, Trevor? Last night. Um. What was the question again? I think finance committee plans to meet at six on the eleventh. I yeah. didn't write it down. I was walking out the door when okay. that happened. All right, yep. I'll check. I've but... got a subcommittee meeting. Yeah. It was right at the end. Um, well, that doesn't mean, it can... usually Brenda covers finance committee. We yeah, can, co we can coordinate if no, we have to. I don't need to be there. Yep. The other, um, and I know they want to talk about the, CIPC is going to talk about the police station. Yes, so there's an application yep. for the police station. Um, um, Chris and I talked the about the MVP the, stuff. The, the Probably should review the purchase of the, um, property property so that's what lily's got well that's the thing um lily had sent in the senior housing thing which is includes the land acquisition um but the purchase and that's actually on your discussion i was going to ask you to put a pin in that because we aren't in a position to really answer that question just yet okay, okay. um that's fine i just want to make sure that right if it does that it gets on the agenda if necessary so okay Article five is good. They've approved the pending CIPC recommendation. Right, pending CIPC's recommendation because the costs change. Yeah, changed. Um, right. Now they skipped everything else until the borrowing article. Yeah, they didn't. <laughs> they didn't get a chance to go through the rest of it. So we won't have recommendations on any of the other articles except for the borrowing article. In the borrowing article, they recommended two million, but two million. We want uh, I, I, four million, right? And we can hold off that. on the rest of that because you'll note that I put that recommendation in. We can keep go. We can go through the rec rest of the warrant in its in its order. I just wanted you to know that they skipped everything else. Um, well, I'm fine with six. I I just wanted to make sure that um we had some discussion on the borrowing. Mm -hmm. Um, based on the river road is 3,200 feet. And it, the the last rainstorm from last Friday, um, it dropped another foot. I was anticipating doing a mass works application, which is about 18 months out if we get it. Okay. Mm -hmm. But it's because it's a multi-million dollar project. So I, I feel since we haven't even done who's a road yet, um, we're over two million. Okay. I realize that now. I didn't. I when we talked last night, I knew I gave them the numbers that we had spent already, which was like a million, roughly a little less. But I knew that there was still four hundred thousand coming from paving on Pine Nook, and there was another three hundred thousand for um, Huzak. But I didn't realize that there's still bills we haven't paid for what we've done on River Road. So we're probably up to two point five short doing any major thing on right. river road. And I and I just very conservatively, you're talking more than a million, probably closer to two million mm -hmm. for that thirty two hundred feet. Right. Because you have to take out it's like if you think about it, you're gonna chop the road off and you're rebuilding the whole thing. From the ground sinking. up and it's gotta be wider. It's it's because it can't be straight up and down. Well you've got to you've got to come stone. up with an engineering solution that will allow the water to go through mm -hmm. and not, you know, take the road out. Yeah. And which is what's happening now. So we are anticipating, or it's predicted to have another rainstorm Friday night into Saturday, similar to what we mm -hmm. had on Friday. So if there's more damage, 
Yeah. We, I mean, potentially we're going to have to close the road and then yeah. we're going to have to address it because that's a major artery. So I, I feel, who knows? I mean, I feel comfortable that we are working. I mean, I've reached out to uh, Le Lemonster and um, Fitchburg. Mm -hmm. And when I talked to Ann Gobi on Monday, you know, asking her what, what was her advice to help? She's, you know, and I told her I'd reached out to Lemonster and Fitchburg and we were working very hard to work with them. And she said, that's good because their legislators are, you know, oh, really good. aggressive and like, and, ex and work hard like Joe yeah. and Natalie. Yeah, yeah. So, but I, I was honest. I said, well, North Andover was not, I mean, that they didn't really care about us out here. But she said, that's okay because if we work with North Adams and Pittsfield, yeah. Ashfield Clark. and Clarksburg, and then Conway. you know you have Conway and Deerfield, and then you have um, Lemonster and Fitchburg. She said that's that's a good enough group. Yeah, that she feels that we, and so I've been saying that we needed the four or five million. Yeah, because yeah. that's what cash is what we're doing. Yeah, and the question is, um, is this still part of the idea that Joe was suggesting we need to go directly to the governor, or? Well, we're going to go to the governor directly for, you know, with letters yeah. if we can't. My understanding is they're going to introduce a bill. Yeah. Okay, in the, in the, the and House the, and the Senate. the timeline is still something by Thanksgiving on the governor's desk. Okay. Mm -hmm. But if nothing happens concretely in the next two weeks, then our next meeting, right. we will be asking Chris and Casey to put together a letter from and then we get a sign on from all the communities yeah. and we send it to the governor. I mean, we, we not yeah. dissimilar we to the, yeah. that we are financially stressed. Yeah. You yeah. Know. Basically uh, if we have to replace $5 million worth of road infrastructure and just we, to get to the winter and, and we not have, we have 60, 69% of our, our budget is already allocated towards the schools. We got we no about 4% to, to do everything else. Yeah. We have no money to run the town. Yeah. Well, I think what's what the pro is problematic is that this recovery, like I said, is in stages. You do it through grants. You yeah. don't do it through taxpayer money. Right. And that is a three to five year time frame. When you apply for grants, like the 604B is sure. your planning grant, 319s yeah. are then your implementation. But each of those grants is like a two year section. Right. Be to, be from you getting it to when you get complete and you move on. So we, but this is just trying to get the roads open for winter yeah, and stabilize for winter. This is not even, we had over a hundred areas, literally a hundred areas that were damaged. Yeah. So on our roads and it, so we're not doing, we're already holding back. You're, you're saying, yeah. well, that we already are, yeah. are not doing those fixes permanently. Yeah. But the river road one was one that I was hoping that we would get through the winter, even though it was, you know, it, it, it is, you know, not good, but dangerous, but this is very serious yeah. what's happening now. And I, I, you know, if, if, if you have to re-engineer the road there, you know, the question is, do you want to leave the road where it is or do you want to move it inland? <laughs> right. You That's know? even more expensive. And yeah, but I'm just saying that if you constantly redo the same stretch of road, exactly. it's not more expensive to move it inland. I mean, True. Uh, yeah. yeah, no, you, well, that's point. why you need an engineering solution. This is not right. just a dump rock thing. Yeah. And so anyway, um, okay. I, uh, so what are we talking about? The so, last thing saying what the select board should ask for in this, should it, should it point so, so five. one of the things I wanted to say was there was a concern um, from the moderator about making sure that people understand what the amount could be. And he and Lisa went back and he and the town of council went back and forth on this. The fact that the finance committee recommends up to 2 mil, 2 million, if the select board has a different number and it could be helpful to publish that, usually you would put that number in a motion, but yeah. his concern is, is valid because he's concerned about the public knowing about this. So if the board wanted to address that concern, the board could say select board recommends up to 5 million and then you can explain it. We could actually yeah. put, 
we could put a small blurb in the guide that explains that. Yeah, what we spent already, this was, what's needed, this and right. what we're going to have to you do. You know, I'm floating it because damage. of his concern and the fact that you're talking about these numbers. It needs to be listed out for I, everybody to understand. And yeah. we've talked, I mean, everybody in town knows already what we're dealing with, but how we're going to fund it is the other, is what we have to make clear to them. Well, it's just frustrating because we don't have a number from the legislature yet. Yeah. No. And you could say, I mean, yeah. I think at town meeting, you could say that. Yeah. You we could make a the, strong argument. We did it with the with the sewer. We didn't know what we were going to get for a grant, and they still passed it. Yeah. And so to that, to that comment, do you want to include a notation about what you could conceivably request as a... Yeah. So, it, it, sort of in the same way that the finance committee's yeah, recommendations but I thought you on. can't go down. I want five us million. to put it five million. We can talk about it going down if we have more information. Right. If but the you wouldn't doesn't put drop. it in in the request. You would put that's what I'm saying is you would put it as a notation on the warrant, not as a not as a number in the warrant because you usually huh? put that number in the motion. Is what Lisa. So in other on. words, um, what I'm so the. I, I'm I'm not understanding. Finance committee recommends two million. Select board recommends, recommends five. five million. There you go. That's so it's not out. in the the warrant article, Tim. Correct. So later on, when we write the warrant yep. language, when you write the right. motion, it would be in the motion. Up to it will say up yep. to whatever up to. number is. Right. Yeah. Okay. And uh, so, Carolyn, would you put in a notation that says up to five million? Yes. Okay. And right. and we can look at it. I mean, if if. If we don't get very much rain and there's no real additional damage, maybe I would think about going down. But right. if we have if if it drops more or collapses this Every weekend, weeks. Um, you know, okay. I want to be clear that, that it's a multi that, it's a multi million dollar fix. Absolutely, I know that, and you know that. We're right. probably going to have to explain that, but yeah. that's because we saw the damage from the get go, and I know that you've seen the ongoing damage too. One thing I think that would be helpful uh, if Chris or or anyone could coordinate with, I think the chief actually had a video. And if there was a way that we could, I mean, the meeting's going to be here, right? Yeah. So if we no, could. No, it's going to be over at the oh, elementary school. At the if, if we could project the yeah. storm damage. Yes. So that people can see it. Yep. A lot of people have never been up Pine Nook Road. They yeah, they don't what know happened what there. like. Um, so that would be a very useful video, tool. And we need to talk to Dan Graves about whether he would allow that. Well, it could be playing why people are doing check. Yeah, check yeah. In. yeah, we could just, just exactly. Run. That's a good idea. All the just different have spots it we did. So, Everybody's photos. I love that idea. Um, the, uh, the, um, our we'll new, need to explore what that looks like, but I think it's a great idea. Mm -hmm. so our new, share our new police administrator put together the beautiful you got uh, the video. video. Oh, yeah? yeah? Oh, I'd love to see it. Yeah, great. Yeah. Yeah, I think the library had a fair amount of success during the uh, special town meeting last year of showing their presentation. I think something similar could be in the works for us. Absolutely. Yeah. Yeah. Even if it's just like the screensaver in the back while people yep. are filing in and then let's say, hey, what's that? Oh, that's yep. all the destruction. Mm -hmm. That's why we're asking for five million bucks. <laughs> yeah. Okay. At annual, they looked so nice. Yeah. We <laughs> barred them with a uh, horrific photos of storm damage this time. <laughs> I know there will be a collective. Um... Okay. Can, uh, article six. Anybody? Everyone good with? Yeah. So yeah. I. So right now you see the recommendation from the personnel board. Finance committee didn't have a recommendation because right. they didn't address it. Um, article seven. Does the board have anything to say about that? No. They want to put we, anything in. Article we, seven. We already want. We already. Yeah, so article seven it. shows two changes, and okay. that is. The failure to license penalty of between May 1st to July 1st of $20 and after July 1st, it's $35. Oh, great. That's better. Perfect. That's and perfect. there was a section that Lisa requested I take out in the next portion of this amendment, which was F, and it had those, those 50, 100, 300 right. yeah. fines. So that was removed. Great. Thank you. Perfect. I just felt it was too way too yep. much. Okay. okay. Um, so this the Tilton Fund, Lisa's got a comment on here. Um, she don't she doesn't believe this is the proper process to follow. And honestly, the finance committee, it, Brenda had some questions about that. Julie had a question about it as well uh, before the finance committee met. Um, she thought 
Lisa thought this should be delayed. Okay. Because well, whatever. Well, if you read the note, she doesn't think it's the proper process to follow. She time. thinks they have to file with the SJC. Um, you know what I would like to do? I'd like to turn this over to Lisa and the Tilton yeah. Library's lawyer Bingo. and let Lisa and her work it out and don't come to us until they have a solution. Yeah. You know, because we've been Bingo. talking about this since I've been on the board. So I think what, what Lisa's saying is everybody should see the petition before it goes forward. Yeah. So yeah, to your point, I think right. they need guess, to talk that through. I guess I'm, uh, I'm not uh, understanding why the Tilton Library is not using our lawyer to begin with. And you brought that up before, and I don't know the answer to that. I'm sorry. Um, so I'm I'm okay for. So you um, want to strike it? Strike it. All right. Until until we got it nailed down. Yeah, and if it if it is that you know they should just work with the uh, MTC, then let's just get MTC to do this, and you know. Yeah. Then it's done to Lisa's satisfaction, and we don't have. Well, I don't like what this lawyer did, so let's not do anything. Right. Okay. I yeah, will have to let Candace know that us money. that Lisa but, was concerned about the select board and Lisa were concerned about it. Well, the Tilton Library is paying for its own lawyer. Right. But, I mean, it's coming out of funds that they have for. Yeah. Well, Carolyn's question is where, and actually Brenda asked, I think, I don't remember, maybe it wasn't Brenda that asked me that, but the concern was, where is that coming from? Like, like, is that coming out of the regular account or not? Because that's I don't right. think it is. I mean, there, there are three different entities. There's the library staff, there's the Tilton Fund, and there's the Friends, right. of, the friends of the Library. And um, I think it's the the friends the friends that are dealing with this. But I, it could, you know, the functional operation of those two entities is what's at issue. And I always believed it should have been the town's lawyer that was just resolving this. But, you know, that's yeah, just that's me. That's how I feel. No, that's uh, how okay. I feel too. But that wasn't what they were told. Right. So, you know, and it, it, the next step is just to decide, okay, don't bother your lawyer anymore. We're just going to resolve this because it's a, it's a town issue. We own the building. Uh, yeah. I, I, so I need to let, I'll let Candace and yeah. the trust, the trustees that were on the request. I think Nancy Maynard was one yeah. of them. Yeah. I mean, no, and, that, that, Councils ask the select board to consider putting a pause on. Good. Does that makes sense. Okay. Yep. Article nine, we're good with. Article nine is keep track. Keep track. You're, so, you're just gonna this fill it isn't in. filled in by right. Friday. It should be okay. I'm hoping it'll be filled in. I did have a conversation with a perspective. Yeah. I did have a conversation about that. Okay. Um, there's some information we would need to fill in for that. Ten and eleven and twelve. 10, 11, and 12 are all the zoning articles. And yep. so I believe at least has reviewed the language. She did that today. Um, the approach to this is to provide access for people to see the language, but it's so comprehensive. There's so much text. Um, the reference is to look at this, to have people look at this on their own. But Lisa has said to me, she wants all that information in the guide so people have it at hand when they walk in the meeting. Um, so actually, Amy has been working on pulling the revised articles together so that we have that information prepared by Friday uh, for people to look at. So the first, the first article here, and I believe planning board wanted it this way, was the major section of the zoning that includes inconsistencies and updates and the new official zoning map. Then you have the conservation subdivision is article 11 and the floodplain district bylaw amendments is article 12. Okay. Lisa had some tweaks to the language that were submitted by Peggy Sloan because uh, Peggy did some tweaks to the request language, the article questions. Um, and Lisa reviewed that too. And she had a couple of, um, she had a couple, there's a tweak here that I want to ask Lisa about. And that's this cross out where it says the proposed amendments. She doesn't think I need to include that in there. I just want to confirm that with her. Do you have a problem with me making that final change with Lisa? Oh, no, that's fine. Um, you mean you think it should be there? Lisa's told you it shouldn't. Doesn't have it to was be there. in there originally. I think Lisa's saying, take it out. Yeah. And, and if, them because I would leave the text out. below there because basically it says or the language is available at X. So, I mean, 
Is there any reason why we wouldn't just approve crossing it out? Because Lisa's already said it. I think Lisa said that. So yeah, yeah. I just, I, yeah. Take I didn't out. get a chance to do the acceptance on that change. Yeah. Okay. Um, and then, so you'll see. I don't know. Do you have any different thought, Trevor? Nope. No. I'm with you. I'm, I'm I think it's take it out. out. <laughs> it says cross out, cross it out. I think what she's saying is it's redundant when I yeah, read yeah. it. Yeah. I think maybe that's what you're seeing too, Tim. Mm -hmm. um, my so whole Article concern, 13 is Snowberry Circle. My whole concern with all the zoning is that it's a lot to do at a special town meeting, but whatever. And to be honest with you, you heard Dan say the same thing. Yeah. Yeah. Um, if there's enough people, I mean, we've had a ton of people at a special town meeting before. So there will be a ton of town meeting yeah. at the Snowberry Court. So yeah. I, don't, I don't feel like it's. All right. Thumbs so up. one thing I would say um, before we finish, and I had talked to Chris about this, is do at least one press release, preferably two, mm -hmm. um, because that really gets the word out to people. Um, so 13 and 14, I place them where I place them. Does the board want to make any changes to these placements? Nope. Nope. Snowberry Circle is um is, was the last one until we talked about the borrowing article. Yeah. I put the borrowing article at the end. Um, actually, I would put the borrow. Let's swap it. You want the borrowing article before that? Yeah. Only because I don't want people walk. It will be a long meeting, and I don't want people walking away in the middle of that. And this week. is a simple simple majority vote. Yes, it is because it's we're just authorizing the borrow. Yeah. One of them's two thirds and one of them's simple majority. Yeah, the the borrowing is simple majority, and the and the Snowberry Court is two thirds. Uh, or no, no, that's. Um, yeah, no, it has to be two thirds for the Snowberry the two Court. Thirds is Snowberry, Court is two -thirds. Snowberry Court is two thirds. Snowberry Court is two thirds. Yeah, it doesn't, yeah, it doesn't say it. So above that two thirds is actually that's the for, zoning for the, one. That's for that's the article for the 12, one. Yeah. Um, which is actually going to be Article with, Ten. Let me check with with Lisa because. We actually, Brenda and I were talking about that yesterday. Um, and I don't know that Dan asked the question about the borrowing. I'm probably going to have to call Dan and talk yeah, to him about it. It's fine. Um, yeah, I can't, one, one, I, can't, I don't think it does, but I can't remember. One is two thirds and one is simple majority. And I want to say that the election would be simple majority. It is, it is. And two thirds is the is the article. Two thirds would be the article for yep. the borrowing. Yeah. So you want me to put the, RO, the borrowing article above Snowberry? Yes, because we can't have people walking out, voting for Snowberry one way or the other, and then walk out in the middle of that last article. Yeah. They want to make sure the road gets, you know, turned over. To they the need camp. to stay. Yeah. <laughs> They have to stay for the whole meeting. Okay. All right. All right. Good. Thank yeah. you. Um, oh, I'm sorry. No, it's just it's a lot. Right? Headache. Oh, sorry, I, I, right, Mike. Literally got a headache. Yeah, I know. I, I hear you. It's time to then wow, wrap it's up. late. Let's go. Okay. Yes, we're trying to finish up. We, we should be able to finish up here. Um, so we got done this. Now we're on the. Um, Is this similar? on the agenda yes but not yet not yet okay okay good. um potential senior housing land purchase we... let's put a pin in that because there's some work i need to okay. do okay um self deerfield wastewater treatment borrowing trevor do you want to talk about that we can do, do we... it together do we have borrowing we so talking? it's the borrowing so there was a question about the the notification. Oh, that's this. For yes, that's this. Oh, that's yeah. that. Okay, so it is ready. Yep. So yes. So oh, I'm sorry. No, no, I didn't remember how it was going to be talked about. Yeah. So we were. Did, so when we borrowed the three million dollars, um, yeah. the town approved it. We feel like we did almost everything right, except for a uh, a notice. So it was a it was about where the. Notice. So it's an administrative defect in the notification. Right. Um, town um, bond council talked to me about it, but he gave me a path to deal with it. Right. So we've apparently done we've done this before, we right? We've done this before. Yeah. Where you ask the legislature to we validate a this. town meeting vote. Correct. Right. Okay. So I make a motion well, that we have the town clerk, I mean the clerk of the select board, sign the um, vote of the select board to request passage of special legislation. So Is that. Is that I so whatever it says? Yeah, the voted section in the middle is so, the motion. Okay. I'll make a motion. All right, you. I'll withdraw. I'll make mine. a motion that the town, uh, the town requested uh, the introduction and passage of special le legislation in substantially uh, to in substantially the form attached here to, which special legislation will ratify, validate, and confirm 
the town's May 2nd, 2022 annual town election and all actions taken pursuant thereto. I further certify that the vote was taken. This is what I'll be signing. I uh, further um, I further certify that the vote was taken at a meeting and open, uh, open to the public that uh, no vote was taken by secret ballot, that the notice stating the place, date, time, and agenda for the meeting, which agenda included the adoption of the above vote, was filed with the town clerk and a copy thereto posted in a manner conspicuously visible to the public at all hours and or on the municipal building that the office of the town clerk is located or if applicable and in accordance with the alternative method of notice prescribed or approved by the attorney general as set forth in 940 CMR 29.03 parentheses two parentheses B at least 48 hours not including Saturdays, Sundays and legal holidays prior to the time of the meeting and remain so posted at the time of the meeting that no deliberations or decisions in connection with the vote were taken in executive session, all in accordance with general law, chapter 30A, sections 18 through sections 25. Do we need a second? Yes. yes. Second. All those in favor? Tim Hilchey, aye. Trevor McDaniel, aye. Carolyn Ness, aye. Uh, yep. I need you to sign up. All right. So we just need to fill in the numbers of the, um, the number of select board members i think Trevor. yes yeah at the top it was i the clerk of the select board of the town of deerfield certified that at a meeting um, of the board held on october 4 2023 uh, of which meeting all members of the board were duly notified and at which a quorum was present the following vote was passed by a vote of three three, three zero in zero. affirmation zero yep in negative and zero, zero. in abstaining okay yep. i got that got it all right, so that's done. Good. Thank you all. So the only thing we haven't done is put together the letter to send um, address to Representative Blay. I have requested, I spoke to Joe, but I wasn't able to speak to Natalie before she left on Monday. I sent an email out to Joe and Natalie to see if I can get a conference call with the two of them to discuss this. And then Rick and Rick Manley's bond counsel, Rick and Lisa, if I have any questions, they're going to help me put this together. Okay. Um, the key piece is the asking our legislative delegation to push this as quickly as possible. Yep. And Brenda and Sarah and I had a conversation with Margaret McLean, who's our Unibank financial adv advisor. Um, she would really, she thinks this needs to be done by next month. So I may that. need, <laughs> I, I may need help with that. Yeah. Good luck. Um, it, and I'm saying this to the to board as the yeah. board. Yep. Um, but I did say Joe seemed to be pretty receptive. Yeah, right. At least our government's not shutting down. For 45 more days at we're least. Working. We're working. Yeah. Okay. They work hard. Um, next item on the agenda is the bond anticipation note reflection on current cash flow. I think we've already discussed, yep, we've discussed that pretty that. much. Yep. We're are we pretty solid for five million? 4.5 to 5. Yeah, I think the discussion at finance was they understand and they, I think, are in support of, of all of it. They kind of wanted to see a plan and numbers for the River Road thing and yeah. then would bless it. But So they understand what we need ahead of time, but they'd love to see some sort of idea ahead of time before they approve. Well, there's nothing we can do until you, I mean, you have to. We well, have we no plan. Have some sort of plan. And yes. I think once they see the plan, they thought by April they would approve it. But that's just relaying their info. Um, I I can, um, it's a multi million dollar yep. thing. And it yeah. has to be fixed before winter if well, it gets it really worse. Is. But it we don't worse. have any details. And I think maybe no, they feel uncertain no about it. Yeah. So the thing is, the road collapses between now and October 23rd, and then the five million will seem self evident if it doesn't. Right. But yeah. Yeah. In so the meantime, we're going to get a rainstorm this weekend. Yeah. I, I don't know why, you know, you know, couldn't we ask the DPW to give us a cost estimate for placing 300 or 3,200 square feet of roadway? I mean, probably going to need some more, like a, a detail, a coal cod or somebody who came right. in and did some of that other work. What would it take to take this down and rebuild it? Yeah. I can tell you that uh, verbally in talking with Kevin yesterday, he said four to 5 million was, low 
to fix no. that stretch of road well for well, for all for all of the repairs to bring them up to um the standards where they wouldn't be threatened again um he, he didn't say anything about going higher than that and i don't think anybody wants to do that but um yeah he thinks five million is a fair place to land well I'm, uh, people are just backing me up on this i mean it's just a guesstimate but I know. After we, doing this for years, a guesstimate, we still need an engineering plan to figure out what we're going to do. I know, right? But you don't need that money into hiring an engineer. I get it. To get out there and no, give I you a true that. estimate. It's Somebody... kind of like the thing we had earlier, where we can't sign the MVB contract. Yes. We can't because the Leary lot Chicken depends on you know having the two hearings. But until we sign the contract, we can't have the yeah. So it's yeah, I, I agree. It's uh, it's tough. Yep. But okay. Need money to get money. Two million yeah. slow. Before we get off cash flow, can I just make one comment? Um, I did want to let you know I did get an email from the chair of the assessors. They do not think they're going to be able to help us get the tax rate set early. Why? From what I understand, <laughs> there's multiple things in, in play here. Um, mm -hmm. The assessment information, um, the districts. But it, they're late. We seem to be getting later every year. Why, and I get why that. Why can't we not put an effort to get it done sooner? I don't know what the holdup is. I didn't really Let's get, get the an details. answer. What's the holdup? But up? that I did want to tell you, I got that message from him today. So let's and I wanted to why. share that. Why? We'd love to know why. I, you're not the only one. I had that conversation. Well, who, who, who are the yeah. here? We need who, who are the other companies that provide these services? Yeah, there's not that many. That's the problem. There's only two. There's right. only two. Um, but to your to your point, I will ask that we question. I didn't answers. have a chance to ask before everybody left. Today. But I no do think that you know a structural change might be in order, and that's the one that says you send out you send out bills um, based, based on, on the current last year's. the current thing and say. Uh, once the rate has been set, we're going to adjust. Now yeah. it might be harder to do that with the water sewer, mm -hmm. but maybe it'd be easier to do it with the sewer because do we control that process? Yeah, we don't have to wait for Patriot. No, we do. We we wait for the water, water department. Bill. Yeah, but they're working on trying to get it to us early if they can. Yeah, so they're aware, and I'm going to stop in and remind them again. Thank you we're very grateful for their work. Um, is there any update on the planning economic development coordinator position? Tim, is so, there anything you wanted to say? Um, well, no, I mean, basically, I think um, we dis we should discuss the, and Casey, if you want to so chime in. So what I would suggest is maybe we, we haven't closed the vacancy search, and we do have at least one other viable candidate. It might be worthwhile to, I would like to call the person and have a conversation about what might be viable to attract more interest from that person. And that would have been a finalist we would have put forward. However, salary seemed to be an issue. Um, and that's also a conversation with the town accountant to see what kind of room we have in the budget without making a significant change. So I had, Tim had asked me about it and that was my thought. Um, I don't know how the rest of you feel, but Prior to going out for a new vacancy posting, we, like I said, we do have a viable candidate that might be worthwhile checking in with. I I, I feel like um, we went through the process. This person would have been the choice. So, um, well, yeah, I, I, I think it's worth a conversation. I, I agree. I think basically what what I what Casey and I were saying is that we should ask this person. We are in a position where we're under under the current uh, posting, we can negotiate issues with this candidate if we decide that the candidate's the right one for us. So we should encourage the candidate to go to the select board interview to make sure that uh, Trevor and Carolyn think this is a good candidate for the town. Before we repost this job, um, we've been hearing anecdotally from uh, at, at the Ann Gobi meeting, there was discussion about how hard it is to find a planner. Uh, <clears throat> this candidate has many years of experience working with um worked for a senator uh in the legislature worked for six years it's got a you know town administrative background has grant writing experience um would be able to hit the ground running so you know just years of experience um would give us a reason why we might look to slide them up the scale 
Uh, I've checked with Brenda and, and based on the fact that we haven't expended any of the money for this plant, this, this post that was available on July 1st, um, there's, there's Room in the budget. Ad adequate money to address that need within the, uh, within the budget without asking for any money from anybody. And uh, so I, I really think it's a smart thing for us to do because if we could get somebody in here by November 1st or 15th, depending on what kind of notice was necessary, um, you know, it, we, we've got a, we've got a grant for a, a geothermal study that could be handed off right away. We've got, you know, so many things that, uh, that we could really use the help on. Keep in mind, we don't want to bury anybody that we have. Well, yeah, we've got a few grants that we've already. There's we've, work to do. Let's there's put it work that to way. do. Yeah. There's work to do. And the roads are one of the work. I'm yeah, like, exactly. I'm, so I'm exploring what, yeah, exploring yeah. what, what might be possible is useful. Right. Yeah. yeah. And, and what we, what Brenda and I talked about, although Casey wasn't involved in the conversation, I, I, I just met with Brenda because I wanted to see what is our flexibility. Um, and I don't know which area it's under. Uh, in the in the administrative, um, where is the administrative stuff? Oh, which you, which 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 um, grade is which section is oh, your office yeah, in? My office. So I F. think we have the planning F. economic development oh, yeah, it's coordinator in. Yeah. I think it's in. G. No, it's F. It's F. It's F. F. And um, one, two, three, four, five, six. Um, Brenda felt comfortable with thinking about you know, step six um, as a possible place where, you know, we wouldn't necessarily, you know, I don't want to go into any more details about it, but I think having Casey talk to him, talk to this person and determine whether there's flexibility, um, I think would be a good thing for us to do. Okay, great. Moving okay. on. So Town I'll clerk. that if you're okay with that. Yeah. Town clerk position, in case you wanted to give us some. Yeah, I did want to give you that. an update. So we conducted a review of applications for the part-time clerk position. And after we interviewed, the group was prepared to present a finalist to the select board. However, that candidate declined further con consideration. And in the midst of all of this, um, we all, we meaning the internal group that did the the review, and that was myself, the town accountant, the treasurer collector, and the assistant town administrator. We all read the article that came out in the Herald over the weekend, which was that 128 communities are affected by lack of town clerks and assistant clerks because people have left the career. So the Secretary of State's office really made a point a to say he's concerned about it because we're going into a presidential election. So, and we're not the only state experiencing significant turnover in elections positions. Um, so I think it's gonna be continue to be an issue. And so after some consideration, um, we'd like to present the board with a memo about the, the department and maybe consider looking at this a little bit differently. I don't have a firm thing because we were, Fine. Yep. Brenda and I were working on finance committee stuff yesterday. So, um, you know what? That's fine. All right. Um, and I might ask you to meet. <laughs> all right. Just do it. Yep. Um, letters of support, the DPU guidelines. I'm fine with that letter. Did you ever all have a chance? Yeah, to I looked at it. The Which draft letter? letter that came yes. from uh, nope. Colonial Power. Are you okay with it? I'm Tim? good with that. And Trevor? Yeah. Okay. Thank Would you. it be so, okay if we used your yes stamp. signature stamp? Yes. Okay. Just go there, for it. There was another municipal relief ideas note in here. Is that on this agenda or was that just a piece of mail? What? The municipal relief ideas. Oh, oh, so it was really related to, I called it the municipal, the second, the third act of the municipal modernization. Right. And that's, I think initially it came across the stamp was served that way. Essentially it is Stam put together a letter about it. We thought you guys might want to comment about it because it's got some elements that would be useful. I want to add one thing is for them to develop redundant solid waste disposal for wastewater under the, um, under the uh, recycling and waste disposal mm -hmm. bullet point. Would love to add that. Can because, you write it down and tear and? Yes, I will. If okay. you would, if you wouldn't mind, I'll send you an email. So I don't forget it. I'll send you an email. All right. Yep. Thank you. 
Chris, do you have any Larry Lot updates? Uh, essentially, I've just been working with Rivermore, uh, Eversource, and Berkshire Design on figuring out how to get the timing of this right. Um, so what it's going to look like is the make ready work for the level two component that we know for certain is going in there um, is going to be up first since that's not dependent on any grants that we haven't received yet. The level three, we're still waiting. I've been checking grants.gov religiously um, and there still has not been a decision released on that one. But so that's a, that's a federal grant, right? Yes. Oh, so you might get the information coming this this week now that the government's not shutting down. I think yes. Buddy was more focused on, you know, if mm -hmm. the government shuts down, what are we supposed to do? And now, yeah. now that's off the table for another 45 days. We might get some release on the federal funds. Sure. Um, so that would be good to see. Um, but for now, what we're going to do is we're going to have them install the level two charging infrastructure underground uh, first. Um, and that will work well with just schedule of uh, beginning work after site plan is approved and the site plan design is in the works right now. Uh, we're aiming for planning board uh, presentation on November 6th, which is their regular meeting that month. Um, and everybody's in agreement that that's a reasonable timeline. Um, so once we have that done, we'll be in really good shape to have construction start up right away and get as much done as we possibly can um, before the weather becomes untenable for that. Um, and I'm I'm pretty optimistic that we can we can still have this with a substantial amount of progress this calendar year. Um, and beyond that, that's essentially all I have right now. Um, just make sure when you go to uh, post the planning board for that um, November sixth, you post it for the select board as well. In case, okay. I mean, I I will plan to go, but in case mm -hmm. um, Trevor and Tim want to come. Okay. Sure. And and Chris, just since you spoke about the Leary lot, I just wanted to, I sent you an email earlier, and I think I included Casey on it. And Jeff, um, at a previous meeting, maybe it was after Jeff left, but, you know, Trevor and I were saying, you know, we, we should incorporate like a sidewalk that's made out of cement or whatever it's made out of, where the, um, where the asphalt from traditional asphalt from like North Main Street comes up into the parking area, mm -hmm. have a break and then have the porous pavement so that you don't end up yeah. when you're, when you're redoing one thing, you're mixing commingling with another thing. And, yeah. um, and the same thing on the other side, if we decide to do the, the driveway onto Elm street in traditional pavement, mm -hmm. you know, I don't know that we will, but if we did have a break where it meets the porous yeah. pavement in the parking area. Do we want to do cement sidewalks downtown or whenever we yeah. do downtown? Yeah. Sounds good. Thank you. Sure. For yeah. Thank you for sending that, Tim. Yeah. Next item on the agenda, we do have, unfortunately, a resignation from Sue Corey. So um, I would so. love to just uh, say thank you to Sue for yes. tw over 12 years of Amazing well, support she to our seniors. also held the place together when there was Absolutely. no director. There was she's a month done of so much, director. and I know our yeah. seniors love her, and she's been a huge, um, huge part of our town, a huge part of our seniors for so many years. I can't thank her enough. Yeah, thank you, Sue. So, um, she and best of luck in your new position. So I'll make a motion to regretfully accept the I'll second resignation. It. All those in favor? Emil G. I. Trevor McDaniel, I. Carolyn S. I. Thank you again, Sue. Yes, thank you, Sue. Um, the so the senior center director would like to start to get that posted mm -hmm. relatively yes. soon. Yeah. So I want I was gonna tell her that after you the did only, that. The we only thing that. I I would like um is just for her to make sure she reviews the um job description. Uh, also, Do you want changes in that job description? Because otherwise we have to I go through so. I mean, we the boo looks at him, and I think we're okay. Good. So you yeah. feel fine. Yeah. yeah. All right. She and I talked about that, and yeah. she thought she and I both thought it was pretty solid. So yep. okay. And no, I, then that's fine. I, I it's just that Sue has been there for quite a while, and I, think, I didn't know if anything changed. I believe that um, she invited uh, the director invited anybody that wants to say goodbye or anything. There's yes. Being a little thing at the at the senior center. Um, I want to say Friday at. Um, I think it's the thirteenth. Oh, on uh, the 13th. Is it? Because I think the 13th is Sue's last day. Yeah. Right? 
Are they going to give her a shot that day? Yes. <laughs> <laughs> I, I don't know if it's going to be at uh, Sunderland or... Uh, or I don't sure. remember. I'm sorry. Yeah. We'll try to get some info and update. And uh, you probably... Not probably to confuse people, the, the clinics are at the Deerfield Elementary School. <laughs> yes. Right. <laughs> the one thing I also wanted to mention on the 13th while we're here, just real quick, is uh, MMA Legislative Breakfast. The closest one to us is in Beckett. Just to give you an idea, it's a it's a hall. That's why I wasn't going. Yeah, I might. And go, it starts at so. eight o'clock. Yeah, I might. You're going to be well, in Beckett. I, I go out there all the time, so he does actually. Yeah. And Constantly. what do you leave at six fifteen? Yeah, well, that there. morning I would. Yeah. You no, know, probably uh, it takes about an hour and fifteen or so. Yeah. Well, just wanted to let you know that was happening. Trevor, so. Trevor, we are all in favor there's of no, you getting up. Hey, there's a closer breakfast. In other words, there's a it, closer sorry. chamber breakfast. You can yeah, go to that. <laughs> right. Exactly. <laughs> We're in favor of you getting up I and out Lennox the door last at last you know Lennox. six o'clock in the morning. Yeah, yeah. Lennox yeah. is nice. Lennox I don't know. a good one last time. But. I, w I was actually curious because I saw the two closest ones were Beckett and Sterling, so I mapped it out to see which one's closer, and it's a matter of like six minutes. Yeah, but they're both pretty crappy for Deerfield. Yeah, yeah, it is for our area <laughs> for sure. Last we, they did one in Sunderland once, it was great. Mm. That was nice and close. I know. Um, right, okay. So Anything on, uh, we have placeholders for, oh, the, um, do we have to have on that uh, discrimination, is the Department of Homeland Security policy? Yeah. What? Well, so it's, it's, weird. it's very similar to the USDA policy and they actually ask for specific things individually. And so Chris and I talked about that. We want to be careful that we don't, that we don't, um, distract from the our own policy so we were thinking that might be a, a title would sort of help because the usda one does require a title um well then that's fine i guess it's i just we were trying to find a way to distinguish it I mean, and to clarify this is for the uh skems grant that Lori worked to receive for the fifty thousand dollars for the heart monitors right yeah there's well, a lot of policies that for fifty thousand dollars. I'm willing to leave Homeland Security <laughs> exactly. on there as the title. <laughs> so, move okay. on. We'll no more we'll discussion. Set other space on any other policies you'd want. <laughs> yeah. Move on. Okay. Yeah. Town administrators report. So I have a couple of things I wanted to bring up. Like Tim said, there's been work going on over at 1821. Um, I had a meeting over the weekend with Collins Center about the manual. So information's been provided to them. They're starting work on that. Um, let's see. We went over the borrowing issues. DPC's coming back, hopefully after they talk to Brenda with some rate information for us. I'll be coordinating the CIPC meeting with Mark Brennan. The budget prep, Brenda and I are gonna talk about that probably in the next week or so. Okay because I think we need to take stock of sort of where that falls in terms of once we know what sort of happens with capital, because we're going to, we're right up against the the deadline for capital for FY25, because that's December 1st. Um, let's see. So the shared streets and spaces, that's actually the crosswalk grant that we got last year. It's a DOT grant. They've been really slow in doing the extension. And I just wanted to let everybody know it's still in play until me, until they tell me it's not. And we're probably going to have to make some adjustments to it because the North Main Street property isn't is sort of not usable at the not in in usable in the same way as we anticipated. And that was actually a site for that. So we're going to have to make some adjustments in that particular thing. Okay. But initially when I talked to them, they said, don't put that forward until we give you the extension. Well, it's been two months since they told me they were going to do that. Um, like I said, I did talk to Joe about our the borrowing question, the administrative defect that we have. I will be circling back around and I'll let you guys know once I do. Uh, the SCEMS chief position. So there is a group that was... And I was a little confused. Tim and I have talked about this a couple of times. Um, I guess Sunderland made an appointment to have someone sit on the internal screening group. And I thought it was informal. Um, 
Oh, no, I was going to bring that up under unanticipated. So I thought it was informal. No, what we're going to do, um, we we had uh, by consensus, um, Tim had suggested, recommended that um, John Pachorek sit on the initial screening um, committee for the SCEMS director. And um, we were all agreed, but Sunderland actually take to, uh, took a formal vote. So um, we feel like we have to take a formal vote. So I would like to make a motion that we um, uh, um, have John Pachork with his public safety emergency um, management background uh, sit on the initial screening committee. And Sunderland for voted for Patrick right. to be on there as well? No, 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 no. Oh. We we vote for our own person, oh. but they voted. Sunderland voted, they voted for their, their, their members. Right. Okay, gotcha. So I would make that motion that we have John Pachorek sit on as our representative in the initial screening committee. And you know, I'll second it. Okay. If there's no further discussion, all those in favor? Tim Hilchey, aye. Trevor McDaniel, aye. Carolyn Ness, aye. And just thank you, John, for he, he had volunteered. And we yeah. had just you know, by consensus agreed that he would be the best person to sit with Tim Drumgold, but um, as our representatives, but it, you know, I guess we needed to take- Yeah, it. so, oh. I mean, basically what it is is that Casey's gonna be part of this group, um, John- Not Bichor, voting. Yeah, yeah. Tim Drumgold, right. and then two um, people from the other towns. Right. Yeah. Okay. Okay. All right. Um, is there anything else that yes. we missed? Yes. We need to deal with this um, HCA. Oh, yes. Yes. HCA. Oh, I'm sorry. Gosh, good thing you bring brought it up. I just want, I had my, I was focusing on the vote so that the screening committee could go ahead. Before um, we touch on that, can I give one more Leary Lot update? I realized I forgot. Oh, oh no, sure. go ahead. A huge thank you to uh, Congressman Jim McGovern's office. Um, they had really quickly responded the first time we had asked them to send a letter of support to the um, director, the uh, Federal Transportation Secretary, Pete Buttigieg. Um, and we asked them to send another one this time to um, the Federal Highway Administrator Director, uh, Shailen Bott, who okay. is in charge of the agency that's essentially tasked with making the decision on the CFI federal grant. So, um, and they, they delivered on that one very quickly for us too. So a awesome. huge thank you to them. Thank you. Oh, that's, so much. that's wonderful. Jim, um, Jim is work, works very hard for us. Um, okay. On the, this is a host agreement for um, confidence analytics, the whole um, little section Tim took out. This is the new. Well, I didn't take it up, but I I I, re, I wrote what basically um, Nick Mosley's group um, has agreed to the language in in the section F of this, which eliminates the need for them to be responsible for okay. the landowners' real estate taxes. That makes sense. And um, even though state law gives us the authority to revoke a license based on non non collection of taxes which would in theory would still affect that. them. Yeah. Um, in reality, I don't know why we would punish one person for somebody else's failing. I agree with that um, completely. Yeah. And um, I said, okay, this is the language we're going to approve tonight. Is this language acceptable to you? Yes, it's acceptable to me. Right. So I thought it might be best for us yeah, just to revote this yep. and sign it and then... We've multiple voted this. Yeah. But... yeah. Yep. No, it's fine. So make a motion. So I make a motion to approve the uh, HCA... Agreement, amended, amended, amended amended HCA agreement between um, Confidence Analytics uh, and the town of Deerfield for a uh, post um, <clears throat> testing facility located on the site of the Sunny Days um, Marijuana Project. Second. I'll second that. All those in favor? Tim Milchi, aye. Trevor McDaniel, aye. Carolyn Ness, aye. Okay. Thank you, Tim. I in my thanks casey rush to get through that i um so thank you okay so i think that's that's it do you, uh, chris do you have anything else i don't okay i will take a motion to adjourn i make that motion second <laughs> <laughs> Sorry, multitasking here. <laughs> Multi Don't fall out of your chair. LTI. <laughs> <laughs>